Hello, lovely people, and welcome to episode five of Distinct and Jovial. It is the 22nd of October, uh, 2021. Uh, it's actually not as late as we normally record it. It's only 9 p.m., not, uh, not, not, not 10 p.m. tonight. So will we have more energy? I don't know. I genuinely no. don't know whether we'll... Not after the week I've had. <laughs> we don't, yeah. <laughs> we, Hashtag no energy. <laughs> Hashtag ruined. Um, as always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Jerry. How are you doing, Jerry? I'm very well, thank you, Dom. <laughs> Been a hell of a week. But tickety-boo. Oh, we always want your best form, that's what we want. <laughs> um, and you may notice in the... Uh, have heard already, but we actually have for the first time ever a guest. So welcome Laura to the podcast. Hello. Hello, uh, welcome. <laughs> you feeling prepared for the craziness you're about to endure? Um, so I, I made a nice big cup of tea. That's for reference about the size of my face. So I should be good to go. It's good. Is Caffeine that... coursing through your veins. I like it. Yeah, yeah, that's powerful. Is that mug almost to give context for the listeners? That mug is probably the same size as a um, as a Sports Direct mug. I think it's a bit bigger. Um, I mean, I've gone for a Sports Direct mug as well. Um, okay. And for those that don't know what a Sports Direct mug uh, size is like, you could drown a small child in it. Do you know that mug? Looking at it, is an ideal size to go and fill up with petrol. <laughs> <laughs> Just a spare little bit. Uh, so despite having a guest uh we're not going to change the structure to our podcast and um, we're not gonna as much as we want to we're not going to go into the, the battle ofs that we had in the last in episode four which we thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed but uh realized it showed our um our dangerous side um so we are purely going to be concentrating on what we normally do um as as per always uh, the views that we display on this podcast are our own. Uh, that, I assume, also goes for you, for you Laura, because you want a job by the end of this podcast as well. I mean, wow. long term, yeah. <laughs> you weren't supposed to that... think about that. <laughs> I, I'm kind of doubtful anything I can say on here would actually offend people enough to... Uh... I don't know. Jerry, Jerry likes. <laughs> Jerry gets on gets on his on his horse, <laughs> and it's a tall one. I haven't been sued by uh, McDonald's yet, so that's a good sign. <laughs> I did and want to say, Jerry, um, you have a uh, my my mum is a big admirer of of you and some of the poignant <laughs> questions. Um, she says the bit that gets that gets her every time, and she's going to kill me for saying this, but eh, uh, the bit that gets her every time is the bit when you go. <sighs> Just no. <laughs> oh, she yes. can she can feel that in her soul. <laughs> That's that kind of sums up my whole life. People say, <laughs> you know, how would you sum up your life in just one word? And I just go, because <sighs> I mean, where do you start? It, that it's is good. Start. It's very expressive. Yeah. yeah, it's the start and the finish. <laughs> Don't need to go into anything more. <laughs> Right, we'll crack straight on to what we normally discuss. Um, we're going to go into our food item of the month, uh, and I, I don't know how we're going to do this one. This is going to be um, yeah. this is going to be interesting. Um, so we're going to look at baked goods tier list. Um, Jerry's been frantically writing more notes this, uh, earlier <laughs> on, and I just saw them. And I went, "What has he done?" Um, this has come up because uh, where where Laura lives, um, when I went to visit. Uh, I have never been introduced to so many good baked goods in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, to give context, uh, what was? Oh, it was a. Oh no, I'm gonna get this wrong. I, you, I say you've never. You've, you've, that's the first time you've said it right. You do realise that <laughs> genuinely in about six months, first time you've said it right. So it was a. It's got croissant pastry, shaped mm -hmm. like a muffin. Mm -hmm. It was based upon a 99 flake, so the top was shaped like an ice cream and it had like buttercream filling and then a 99 flake stuck in the top. Um, mm -hmm. And well, we had to divide it in two because I don't think even I could have managed that. <laughs> Sounds Rookie. good. It was good. Um, and like they change their flavours every week, so you can just. Yeah. 
keep keep coming back. It's great. Do they do obscure flavors like chicken? No. Okay. <laughs> Why would you put chicken in a coffee? I don't know. Well, everything tastes like chicken, doesn't it? Ultimately. Maybe. <laughs> I just had a full Scott Pilgrim moment. I was like, bread makes you fat. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll go on to that. So we're going to go, like, we're going to try and make a tier list. So we have a list of um, baked goods. And then we were going to try and put them into, like, God tier, great, good, and meh. Um, I did mine earlier. I don't have any in meh, by the way. So this could be quite difficult to try and put in the right places. You're looking at me, Laura, as if to say you have some in there. <laughs> I have some probably more controversial ones. Okay. Right, well, let's start with biscuits then. Like, where people have put that that one in which tier? <laughs> Cherry, I don't Meh. know. You've put biscuits in there. Yeah. I'm not Meh. a big biscuit fan. Yeah. What? They're boring. What do you mean they're boring? <laughs> okay, freshly baked chocolate chip biscuit out of the oven see ah. I will argue a biscuit is different to a, a cookie and yeah. biscuits what about a I'm like meh <laughs> I don't well, know where you're going biscuit. with this guy I don't know have you, have you got the Google Doc open Laura I, I do I don't <laughs> oh my Jesus <laughs> Jerry has just put in so alongside some of these Jerry's right. put in right if like you can make biscuit. it I'll give it a go and give it a ranking but <laughs> croissant slash biscuit yeah so it's, is yeah. that is that basically just a Danish? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> both me and Jerry are currently looking at the sky. Is thinking very deeply because Danish isn't officially on the list, and like that's a Danish is not a meh. But for me, biscuits, meh. I'll happily go about. You've just thrown in a serious curveball. <laughs> I can't believe we're five minutes into this podcast and I'm stumped already. Well, I did say I had some controversial ones, so... Yeah, but that controversial? Did you, <laughs> did you have to go nuclear with it? <laughs> Danish? Okay. Okay, I see where we're going. Where, where have you put biscuits, Joey? I I think biscuits are... Well, it depends on the type of biscuit, but they could be God. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I, I, mean, I struggled with this one. I've, I, do you know, what? I've actually put it in good rather than meh. I because I <laughs> think there's more. Just, just all ends of the spectrum there. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We used I to mean, be indecisive. If, if, if it was, I mean, if it was like a a, a uh, like a rich tea biscuit, that's a hundred percent in meh. But if you're going for a full fat chocolate hobnob, then you're 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 looking at like god tier. Nah. <laughs> Jerry, we stunned Jerry. Uh, uh, well, I'm... if you're going for a hot hobnob, like I kind of feel, I'd prefer a flapjack as a tray bake, which is oh, probably right. more like a cake. And like, I don't like the chocolate; it will just melt everywhere. Oh my god! Like if I want chocolate, <laughs> first chocolate. a Danish, now a flapjack. <laughs> this wasn't even on the list. <laughs> I'm not gonna it lie. Can't... I sort of looked. I haven't actually ranked really any of them because, I, like, in my head, like, they're, they're not things you can list. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna really struggle. We've gone off script, so Jerry's panicking. <laughs> I'm panicking because I think about two hours in, we're only gonna get down to donuts. <laughs> right, then let's move it on. Quick, 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 quick. <laughs> I mean, br bread's an interesting one. Bread, because bread again, I suppose there's so many different ways you can do it. I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna say it's got like at least a great, if not a god, because like, bread is like bread is bread. You know, <laughs> it's one of the best carbs. Oh. I I agree, Laura. French bread <laughs> baguette, for example, yeah. a proper French baguette. That's god. That's mm -hmm. higher than god. No, I don't know what's higher any, than god. Any freshly baked bread, good. Yeah. All good. All yeah, good. any freshly. I agree. It's interesting because we're going to talk about smells later on, and I think actually the smell of a bakery is probably the best spell. Bleh, 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 spell the best <laughs> smell on the planet. So it's enchanting. That's what it is. Yeah. What about cred? The cred. Croissants. Croissants. <laughs> croissants bread. bread. What, what would that? What would that give you? If you had. Um, a bread, if you added like hybrid. you know some milk and eggs, you could probably make a more interesting like bread and butter pudding. A bit of Ooh. like croissant dough. Oh, now you're talking my language. Okay. 
okay. I do like. I like how you're trying to throw me curveballs, just put me off, and I'm like, it's fine. I've got the recipes at the back. <laughs> I sh- I'm, if you throw flapjacks and, and danishes my way, I'm going to throw back curveballs. <laughs> The, I can't get over the next one that you've combined because we've got brownies next, which are, by the way, 100% god tier. There's no argument against brownies. Um, but be, with the C, with the, with the cr- you've called it, I don't know, I don't, crownies? Crownies. <laughs> but I read it as cronies. Cronies. <laughs> so <we> cronies. Different. <laughs> crownies. Croissant and brownies. I don't know what that would give you. But brownies, I, I put in god tier, definitely. Again, it's all about the quality of the bake. If they're homemade, God, you're buying it from a shop and it's got that really stale edge and synthetic flavour, mm. nah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you know, those like, like those tub boxes that you get from like Asda yep. and other supermarkets that, are, that, that also do them. The bite-sized ones. <laughs> yeah, the bite-sized ones. Sometimes you get one and think, oh, that's all right. And then you get another and you think, oh, man, what is that? That, that <laughs> tastes like, like the This is like the crud box. at the bottom of the pan <laughs> yeah. that's got burnt around the edges. All dry. It's like brand new roulette. Yeah. And would it make... So I saw a photo uh, a couple of weeks back of, like, a brownie dish. And someone had gone in and just cut, like, the middle. <laughs> Taken that bit. <laughs> Does that make you uncomfortable? That's the well for me. That's the sort of idiotic thing that I would do, and then I'd get shouted at. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like the edges. You don't like the edges. No, Ooh. they're too dry, and crispy, ruins it. So I will insist they have to be fudgy brownies, not cakey brownies. Cakey brownies, in my opinion, shouldn't exist. Uh, now we're getting to a level of technical detail that I'm not sure <laughs> me and Jerry can can attend with. Chicken brownies, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. And then, then we've got cakes, which hands down best best baked good ever. You can't go wrong with a cake. Ooh, I wouldn't quite say I. I don't think you can best bake good anything, but it's it's god tier. But I agree. C- cakes are up there with pizza, though. They're so versatile. So is bread. Mm, I mean, is, bread. is pizza not just bread? Yeah, I mean well, that's why pizza's so good because it's it's bread and tomato cheese. and then cheese, which is like. I, I'm really sorry to interject, and I'm sorry to just change the subject very very briefly, but for the purposes of listeners, um, I have to describe this. So something's going on here. Every time Laura takes a sip of her tea, either. The mug's getting bigger, or Laura <laughs> is getting smaller. One of those two things is happening. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, well, we can go back to the subject. Yeah. So, <laughs> I... <laughs> keep it together, Dom. Keep it together, Dom. <laughs> you said that you were going to be the one that was going to keep it on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I've got to keep it together. Okay, God tier for cakes. God tier for cakes. Where are we? Cookies. Because I put these separately, and I think that's well, probably what you you more wanted than biscuits, isn't it, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, Jerry's but we haven't well, we haven't talked about crakes. <laughs> so I, I kind of I don't know what to say about cra- those ones. I don't either. I feel like you've just tried to combine like croissants with everything. Uh, and you'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although you haven't for donuts. No, because we've already got cronuts, haven't we? We do have cronuts. Because otherwise that would be... So, I, so I've called that a doisson. <laughs> that was said very well with a very good French Thank accent. You. Doisson. <laughs> doisson. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, well, well crakes. Go on, then. What do you... Could, could crakes work? I'm going to ask the baking expert here. Laura, do you think crakes uh. could work? <laughs> no pressure. Uh. I, I can't logically think of a way you could combine the two, like unless, make like if you slice lots of croissants up and then like put you know buttercream and jam in between, you can make a fake cake. <laughs> Not really convinced it's gonna be good. <laughs> but yeah. <Okay. you> know. <laughs> I don't know how far we're gonna get <laughs> <to> this. <laughs> oh man. 
Right. Donuts. Donuts is the other one. That was the big inspiration from, from when I when I went to visit. Was the um, butterscotch and and uh, what was it? Uh, cocoa flakes. Like I don't know. Chocolate they don't have frosty. It no butterscotch and cocoa <laughs> flakes on a donut. Oh, and butterscotch is probably one of the best flavors in the world. To do my best Jeremy Clarkson impression. In the world. In the world. <laughs> that was much better. In the world. But donuts are, I think, are um, similar to the um, muffins and... Uh, no, uh, what am I doing? The um, flapjacks and brownies. Whereas if you get the cheap, small ones from any self-respecting supermarket, they are usually... They're a little bit nasty. They've got to be from a bakery. I'm not a big fan of Krispy Kremes. <gasps> I'm really sorry. I, I, I warned you about the contra- controversy. I, I'm hanging up. You're breaking up, Laura. <laughs> You're breaking up. I can't hear you. You're not a fan of Krispy Kreme. No, they're not the like they're not the good donuts. See what? Okay. Dumb Krispy Kreme proving good. Who wins? Um, it's not even a competition. Proven goods every time yeah. because yeah. like Krispy Kreme has that. Like I can, I, Krispy Kreme has its place. It's like the fast food of donuts. So, like yeah. when Jerry can't get his burger before eleven o'clock, he at least can get donuts from Krispy Kreme <laughs> anytime. <laughs> I'm not going to mention the establishment. <laughs> Krispy Kreme, they open at what eight o'clock in the morning. You can get a donut. Eight Interestingly, how do you feel donut. about donut burgers? Ah. Oh. So you use? Oh, I don't know. I think that would be like the brioche, a sweet brioche bun, gone too far. <laughs> I think it's a bridge too far. Hmm. You're not normally a fan of like sweet and savoury together, Jerry, are you? It's like putting fruit in a curry. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, don't. Yeah, no <laughs> fruit. Keep fruit and savory stuff apart, and sweet and savory. Yeah, I don't think it really. Like I say, that at a push, brioche bun, donut bun, with a burger. I think I really do think it's too too much. <laughs> too much, too far. Yeah, yeah, but it's too yeah. fast, too furious. <laughs> too fast, too furious. <laughs> uh, oh my god, where are we? Uh, we croissant. Did croissant. Croissant. Well, croissant. we've done the doisson. We have. Croissant. Always good. But again, what type of croissant are we going to go with? I, to be fair, so the one that we had in Not Proven Goods, wherever the other place was. Northern Rye. Yeah, the ham and cheese one, like croissant that I had, was, was to die for. So, you know, you get that melted cheese and it just goes a little bit crispy around the edge. And it's just like... Ooh. <laughs> oh, suits you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> suits you. I think they're great. Yeah. Yeah. Staple of breakfast. You haven't put a combination for this one, Jerry. <laughs> I, I did, and then I, I deleted it. Okay. A really so cross croissant? Well, yeah, so it's a croissant, <laughs> but with two C's, two R's, two O's, two I's, four S's. <clears throat> <laughs> two ants <laughs> two ants <laughs> but silent yeah it's just like croissant <laughs> you take tastes exactly the same <laughs> yeah I, I, I try <laughs> uh, bagels I've put bagels quite low I feel like I've never had like a proper bagel like I've only ever had you know the ones you get from the supermarket like they've never had like proper fresh baked bagels mm. so i don't really want to judge if that makes sense because there's definitely better ones out there than i've tried yet so so i've had bagels from two jewish bakeries in brick yeah. lane yeah unbelievable and that i assume they're god too <laughs> oh yeah definitely yeah. Yeah. what did you have on them uh I had a salt beef. I used to have either salt beef or um, salmon and cream cheese. Oh, it's mm. so good. So good. Salmon and cream cheese I can get behind. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's another one. We're going to end up just thinking about flipping um, 
food and I'm going to be hungry by the time we finish this podcast. That's going to be the biggest problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we do this to ourselves? Why did we do this to ourselves? What about Craigles? Craigles, croissant bagels. Would that work? I mean, I guess you could just reshape the dough. I'd be French people were just like sincerely offended by everything. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, by the end of it, Jerry, you're going to have offended the entire of France. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait one second. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just experimenting here. Craigles. Just offended France, box. offended McDonald's, and offended anyone that filled up their petrol or bought bog roll during the pandemic. <laughs> On a roll here, Jerry. Bog roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to mention the the the, the next one because I know Laura <laughs> has a bad history with pancakes. <laughs> well, I did it making do. Like, what type of pancakes are we talking about? English, American, crepes? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've just came here and like caused more problems for you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not normally a problem. I'm not more a problem person. I like a solution. <laughs> yeah, but Laura's creating problems. She's a mm. troublemaker. <laughs> I, I, didn't, that I didn't even think about the fact that, yes, you're absolutely right, Laura. Laura you can get crepes, which are, so which are actually different to normal, ordinary pancakes. But then, yes, you're right. You, then you've got the American style yeah. pancakes. Oh, I don't know. I just don't know anymore. And this is this is pretty much why I sort of gave up giving most of them like ranks because I was like, um, it's no. I've gone too generic. That's the problem with the list. Yeah. I feel like what you really need to do is get like just do one of these at a time, but also with like a selection in front of you. Ah, uh, so you mean like do a tier list of biscuits? Yeah. Because that would be but easier. Also, where you get to eat the biscuits because priorities. Hmm. So when we when 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 I've when I've set up the studio and we can do an in in person podcast, we could do a proper we could do like a baked goods mukbang, which pops off apparently on YouTube. That's apparently the thing. Okay. <laughs> if any of you know what a mukbang is, no. No, it sounds rude. It does, but it's. it's I very... assumed it was some form of McDonald's joke for you, Jerry. No, 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 no. It's not. It's uh, M U K B A N G. Um, I think. Uh, trying to spell out loud, Jerry knows how good my spelling is, so um, we can't, we can't, we can't always rely on it. And now you've said that, I've, I'm just thinking of an amorous Ronald McDonald, which is actually really <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> like Ronald humping somebody's leg. Oh my god! <laughs> Things you can't oh unsee. Oh my god! He's McBanging. <laughs> Get him to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so but i mean uh, in a sense a mukbang is literally a video where you watch somebody eat food um and apparently for some strange reason they're really popular on youtube and everyone does them and yet that th yeah uh, uh, totally, totally. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> what fun does this come out we we have on the bottom one about we have crumpets and then we have the the, the ones that we've been mentioning the cruffins and cruffins and cronuts <laughs> we're getting the wrong for weeks um but you've someone's i don't know who's put this on debate crumpets and cheese what that did you put me. on a crumpet what do i put on a crumpet yeah uh you can have on a crumpet either butter or melted cheese no cheese, just no cheese. Oh, so so. Hang, <clears throat> wait one second. Has somebody hijacked her document because I didn't write that? I no, wrote not, it. Really I didn't. Oh, you wrote it. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah, just just butter. Where does the cheese come from? What? Never Have you put... never had? You've never had melted cheese on a on a crumpet? It's... No. Oh, it's to it, die because weird. because right because cr uh, uh, crumpets have the hole the holes in them what is it that um imps going around on golf shoes to put the holes in them that's the advert um and when you like when you melt cheese on toast it you know just kind of goos but when you melt cheese on crumpets it goes into the holes which basically means that when you bite in and pull it's like you know some of the cheese is inside some of it's on top ah oh, to die for yeah melted cheese on crumpets the best thing 
and I'm totally well. I'm not this weekend because I'm away this weekend, but next weekend I am buying crumpets and cheese. Can't can't do it. Can't beat it. It just it just seems wrong to put cheese on crumpets. I feel like crumpets need to be sweet, so we either butter or jam mm. or Nutella or other things. Really, but... I've never had sweet crumpets. Really, I've had sweet stuff on crumpets. I've never had jam or or, or, or Nutella. I've only ever had sweet crumpets. I really? didn't think. See, this get is why I put the debate type. down. <laughs> Yeah. Like I feel there's a proper sweet savory divide. So No, it's two against one. Fact, <laughs> the entire population of the world eats sweet against Dom. crumpets. <laughs> and Dom is the only person in the world that puts cheese on his crumpets. So it definitely might only be my family then, at least anyway. <laughs> right, before I get into more trouble, the Cruffins and the Cronux. Have you had either of those, Jerry? No. Not at all. I haven't. No, I didn't know that they were even a thing. <laughs> okay, so we can't really tier list them. Well, I mean they're god tier clearly. Well, I don't know about the cronuts, but definitely the cruffin that we had was yeah, was above good. god tier. It's like, well, in my opinion, that combined like all four of the best sweet, well, best foods because it was like muffin shaped, croissant past pastry covered in donut sugar shaped like an ice cream with a 99 flake and with buttercream in it I mean what more do you want from life than that they have a tiramisu one occasionally I did see that and I do like tiramisu yeah love tiramisu <laughs> see so I had written down on my paper to like write up our tier list and then read it out at the end but I'm kind of just going to scrap that off because <laughs> basically baked goods are really really good when they're freshly baked from good places they're all good if it's if it's if it's in plastic it's meh that's that's my judgment i i second that <laughs> I and here I second you were that. like oh no biscuits you can't you can't put biscuits in there <laughs> no but i i agree with you though i agree with you yeah. i think i think actually cookies for example freshly mm. baked you can't get freshly baked biscuits, really, can you? Biscuits are just no. biscuits. But a freshly yeah. baked cookie will trump a biscuit any day. So I like, it goes... Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like I'm proud of my, like, my, you know, my lokiness, like, mixing everything up. <laughs> I've converted Jerry. Well, I... So I it's a win. <laughs> I I, yeah, it's a win. I think Laura's done it. That's a KO. Ding, ding. We're back to battles. <laughs> I, I, think, I think Laura's... I think Laura won that hands down because you can't argue with that anything freshly baked is god tier yeah so so everything that we've got on the list there you've got a spectrum haven't you mm. comes either in a, in some plastic packaging and tastes like whatever the packaging <laughs> the packaging <laughs> yeah or you've got something freshly baked and it's made with love and that's always gonna win yeah I feel like this is like a Care Bear hug type thing. <laughs> Make it is, but with pastry and sugar and, and yes. all the good things. Yes, a Care and, Bear And a little smells... bit of diabetes on the side, but it's fine. <laughs> type 2 or type 1? Both. 2. I don't think you can get type 1 from a donut uh, I think, unfortunately, we've just delved into like the two, right. thing, the two things that you're brilliant at, Laura, which is science <laughs> and baking. So <laughs> we're, we're out of our depth here, Jerry. <laughs> okay, so that's another round one. <laughs> ding, ding, science round. <laughs> ding, ding. There you go. It's all right. The computer will crash soon and then it'll be like, hand it back to the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on to pointed questions? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. Pointed questions. Number one. Uh, two in one shampoo and conditioner. I I'd go. Opinions. None. <laughs> None. Do either of you use it or are you both like a separate? Um, I'm a separate, but I've got long hair, so I need to condition. Yeah, I feel like my uh, my opinions on this are kind of forfeit. For those that <laughs> yeah. don't know what I look like, I have a buzz cut that's... At like well I don't put a guard on when I cut my hair so it's like a grade like zero basically so why yeah I have no opinion on it I think it's better to get separate 
because I always worry about two-in-one shampoo and conditioner being like a jack of all trades, master of none. So it's mm. trying to do too much <laughs> in one bottle. It's getting a bit cocky. It's like, oh, watch me. And then it just completely falls over, makes a fool of itself and goes home and has a really long, hard think <laughs> about its identity and what it's contributing to life. Ooh. Choose one way or the other. Are you shampoo? Are you conditioner? Decide. You can't be both. And like, and see, this is where I'm not an expert, but surely they need to be. They have different. Like, I don't know if you've ever read like this. This is going to sound really naive, and I, I'm going to call myself out on this. Off we go. I don't know if you've ever read the back of some, like, food or shampoo, yeah. and like, and actually read the instructions. And I bet you none of us follow them. So I actually use a quite. The mesh ex- ones are pretty funny. Yes, yeah. Um, I actually use quite an expensive shampoo, considering I have pretty much zero hair. Um, but that's because it's the only one that doesn't screw up my scalp, basically. Um, and if you actually read it, it's like, oh yeah, lather into hair, and then leave to sit for two minutes. And I'm like, well, how do I do that? Because I'm not going to have a watch on for two minutes to time it, right? And I'm a very much a like get in the shower, shower, get out kind of thing. And then if you read like shower gel as well, it's like it, there are some that are like lather over body and then let it sit for uh, like X number of minutes. So, like I don't have a clock. <laughs> I don't have a, anything in my bathroom to tell me what, what, how long I've been in the shower. So this is why I think the two in one doesn't work because surely they've got to be treated differently. Surely. I've just got visions of you going. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think two in one shampoo is, is, sorry, it's just, to me, it's more shampoo than conditioner. Like nobody's letting two in one shampoo and conditioner sit in their hair. <laughs> like. Yeah. What would you do with that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just worried about what, your, what vision you've got, Jerry. No, just you going, one one thousand. <laughs> just like Dom in the shower looking at labels 1, going, eh? Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, bearing in mind I don't have my glasses, so I can't read the <laughs> bottles unless they're pushed up to my nose, so the joints are being short sighted. This is just an epic fail, really, isn't it? <laughs> Two in one shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> oh, dear. Question, Jerry. Laura, you won't be able to answer this. Oh, you might be able to, but... Um, do you use anything different on your beard? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> in fact, I, I don't actually put any shampoo or conditioner in my beard. I'll say that much. Oh, really? Water only? Well, I use beard oil. Ah, that's not okay. the same. That's not yeah. the same, though. No. no. Because that's after shower. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. There you go. Yeah, sorry, Laura, you can answer that. <laughs> I struggled. Not yet. <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe what, if we have you got enough, something planned. <laughs> maybe. If eat enough, maybe no, if just eat, bad luck. <laughs> maybe if you eat enough cr- uh, cr- crownies, <laughs> maybe you'll grow a beard. Just get like some sort of sugar fest going on. Like. That's some of the, the challenges to not lick it off. <laughs> oh dear. There is that thing, isn't there, that, that Guinness estimate that there's, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of litres of Guinness are lost in facial hair each year. Mm. So when people take a sip, yeah, it's true. It's true. I have to look it, it up, yeah. <laughs> you have two laptops in front of you at some point. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to, yeah, I'll find it. <laughs> I'll find it. Ooh. Uh, right, number two, rainy weather. Can I can I just start with this one? Mm, yeah, and I'm going to start with a. <sighs> <laughs> just because for Dom's mum. <laughs> just for, yeah, just for Dom's mum. Because why would rainy weather be good, Dom, when we're in a country where it rains <laughs> three hundred and twenty <laughs> days of the year? It rains so much. I've grown gills <laughs> over the years. And webbed you, feet. <clears throat> I've webbed feet. And you go and put a question in there saying, rainy weather, good or not? No, it's not good. <laughs> it's good ha- when you're inside. <laughs> See, I, I get why people will think that. <laughs> but I hate the rainy weather not only because 
like not only do I just you know I hate getting wet and things like that but even even if I'm like driving I hate I hate driving when it's raining I hate and when I'm indoors and like if I'm doing nothing then I'm like okay it's raining it's fine but if I'm trying to do something like I want to get motivated to do some exercise or um, I want to I don't know fix something I don't have as much energy that's when rainy weather even when you're indoors still sucks I think it, more, it just depends on the view you see out your window. Yeah. If you have like a magical storm going on in the background, then it's good. Ah, no. If it's I... like so deep fog that you're like, cool, 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 different shades of grey. Not not as fun. No, I do like a good thunderstorm though, I will admit that. See? I am a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> I could live without it. <laughs> <laughs> but also... Just saying. Sorry. <laughs> so, what about petrichor? What? Sorry. What? <laughs> petrichor. Petrichor. What is that? Petrichor. Petrichor is the smell of like fresh, oh. like the smell of fresh rain on oh. soil. So the smell after it rains, you know, it's it's, yeah. a, it's almost like summer rain smell. Yeah. Well. You can smell it all year round because it's just water and soil. But less so in the winter because the winter it just rains all the freaking time. <laughs> so less less chance. I could live without it. Ah, <gasps> controversial. I'm sure there's some fragrance out there that recreates that <laughs> smell as well. Probably. I'm going to buy yeah. it. That's what. It's going to be the first fragrance I buy after our fragrance chat in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> Petrichor by Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> <laughs> there's something. Out there. It's also a great word, so I was like, I've got to throw that in there. <laughs> so. You're just showing off now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't bamboozle us like that. I think, I think also, and and Laura, you'll you'll appreciate this. So, um, I I do taekwondo, and we have meanings for our different belts, Jerry. And the the black belt meaning is um, uh, I can't remember the first half, but the second half is impervious to darkness and fear. And there's always an addition which says imp- impervious to darkness and fear, but not the wet and the cold. <laughs> Which I think you're a man that can get behind. <laughs> oh. I thought it. I see. That's interesting because I thought the belts would have meanings like, say that one more time. <laughs> and I'm they did bust, when Laura wore I'm them. I'm going to bust your chops. <laughs> <laughs> say it one more time. I dare you. <laughs> I double dare you. That's oh, what, what is he? Some windmilling? Get your keys out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, right. Okay. Um right. Number three. Shall we let Jerry have a rant about this one? <laughs> Building furniture. <laughs> so it it started off fun many moons ago. And then I think by the time I got to my one thousand four hundred and seventeenth <laughs> pack of IKEA flat pack furniture or I'm not picking on Ikea any flat pack furniture in fact Ikea is really good I've had my, my wife <clears throat> goes out of her way to find the shittiest <laughs> flat pack where nothing fits so something which should be technically an assembly time of 10 minutes ends up being 10 and a half hours because you're drilling holes and somehow trying to make this thing fit and using a hammer and glue and yeah i hate it you've you've moved quite a bit laura how have you f- <laughs> <laughs> so i like flat back furniture to me it's dead easy i can get it delivered to my house so it's nice and simple i have got a few notes that that may pretty much rile jerry jerry up a little bit more <laughs> so i find flat pack like it's great when i do it it's when other people and most importantly men try to help that's where it goes wrong. So I've wow. got female, as a female with flat track furniture, you read the plan, you execute the plan, you get the job done. Well, no, because the full quote of that is read the plan, uh, read, read the plan, <laughs> execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, throw away the plan. That's the full quote of that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, this is the female version where we read the plan <laughs> properly and we actually get it to work. <laughs> I can hear my mother now going, Laura, you're so good. I read, I, you know. The and, male I'm... version of this, by the way, oh, is number this. one. You assume you don't need a plan in the first place. 
You then throw throw away your own plan. You then throw away the plan. You then scream at everyone else and demand sympathy because it's suddenly not working (laughs) because there's suddenly no plan that you threw away. And then you blame shoddy craftsmanship when it doesn't work. But the only thing that was really shoddy was the fact that you threw away the plan in the first place. I think Joey, your wife's going to love the this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. I tell you what, I challenge you. So I'm going to get my wife to order. <laughs> and, and, and I'm actually going to ask her to go out of her way to try and find the shittiest flat pack. <laughs> I'm going to have it delivered to your house. And then I'm just going to, and then you just need to video yourself assembling it. And we'll see how. Bring it. How, how much fun that is. <laughs> see, I, I, I did one the other, I, had, I, I bought some new furniture and it was obviously flat packed from, not from Ikea, from uh, some other reputable brand. Um, and it wasn't too bad on, on one thing where it said, assemble it this way. So I assembled it that way. And as soon as I put it down, it bent the piece of wood and snapped all the dowels in half. And I was did like, Titan? no, it's a, it's a, it's a dowel. So it's just like, you know, push wood together. Yeah. And I was a bit like, well, that's annoying. <laughs> and then, so we went back to the shop and went, oh, I need some help here. And they went, oh yeah, that's happened before. I was like, well, then why have you designed it that way? Once I, f- I followed instructions again, to make sure I gently put the thing down so it didn't like the floor didn't like nudge it and then put the rest of it together having a look at it it was like there's probably a better way that this could have been designed so i read the instructions followed it (laughs) executed the plan went out okay other than the fact that their instructions weren't great so i like you blamed the product this time it was the product (laughs) i followed the instructions and it's the the dow snapped so you know, I managed to get some spare dowels. What more do you want me to do? Right? Um, I like a good Lego model. So I actually... Oh, yes. I enjoy yes. following instructions. Yes, I do as well, actually. But the reason why I don't like building furniture over building Lego models is because there's, like, this anxiety of, like, if you screw it up, you can't use the piece of furniture for its purpose. Whereas if you screw up, like, a Lego model... You just take all the bits off and start again, and that's part of the fun. <laughs> I'm I'm 100% with you, Tom. <laughs> Absolutely, I love Lego. Have you seen the new Lego Titanic? <laughs> it's over 9,000 pieces. It's about 14 and a half kilos in weight. It is, it is my 30th birthday Jeez. coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag you, Titanic. Do you know what I got for my 21st? fundraiser. <laughs> You laugh. Do you know what I got for my twenty first? Go for it. Yes. I I got the I got the Lego Death Star for my twenty first, and uh, uh, I don't know if um, oh the one with the the laser beams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got that. Yeah, I don't know if you were part of the group that that arranged for me I, getting it. Well, I think Steph was the one who, who was the key one who arranged yeah, it all. She, I think I think I just probably just shuffled some money, but like you you were organised. Yeah. Magic this away. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I have the Death Star. I'm, it's oh, it's I was gutted. It's at my parents' house, but when so when I move, I'm going to get a plinth and have like the only way I can describe it is a museum style case because the only problem with Lego is the worst thing is dusting it, as yeah. my mum will attest to. Um, but yeah, I want to put it in like a, almost like a museum case so it's covered and protected and have it displayed in probably my lounge. That is awesome. You could tell that, that I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> But what happens if you drop the Lego Dev Star and it shatters into a million pieces? The, the pieces are still connected. I'll just go and find the instruction booklet, which I still have, <laughs> and start again. <laughs> Not, it only took me five days last time, so. <laughs> so I've got, the, I've got that Lego Death Star and I've also got the Imperial Star Destroyer, <gasps> which I built and that really wound Chloe up because <laughs> that thing is huge and she said, I'll for for sakes well, Fluffing, I don't know flipping. I don't know how big your house is all I know is that you've at least got one wall that's um, currently held up by tea lights uh, so. yes <laughs> well two two walls now where, where does that live well no it, it's back in its box uh, okay. but 
before we moved i built it and it did gather a lot of dust unfortunately i i, I lost the battle the dust battle <laughs> but that lived in my home office where we used to live but it literally took up half the space in mm. the office it was yeah. huge yeah but the only, epic model yeah the only reason why i wouldn't have it in the office is because i'm planning to have like a studio so in live podcasts anyway another another story <laughs> nice number four bucket hats so me and laura have a surprise for you jerry <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So for the Lunching listeners, bucket hats. For the listeners, me and Laura have just put on. What's interesting, like I, bucket hat to me, I always thought was um, uh, like a summer thing, but these are woolly bucket hats. <laughs> That's what makes these so amazing, <laughs> and and even better. <laughs> like I can't put mine on because I've got this giant headset on. It's just kind of sat on my head. Uh, uh, but also, uh, it's from a it's from an anime, <laughs> anime cartoon, anime, anime. I mean, um, it's a kids anime. Yeah, it's a kids anime. Uh, so it's but both me and Laura. <laughs> well, how many times have you watched it, Laura? Two or three, maybe. Not not as much as you, I don't think. Yeah, I think I've I've probably re- watched it about eight times. So yeah, you that's a like Jamiroquai Dom. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Jamiroquai. So, yeah. Uh, for and for the listeners that obviously can't see, so uh, myself and Laura both have woolly um, Appa hats. Um, Appa being uh, the one of the creatures from um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yep. yep. <laughs> and we've stunned Jerry into silence. <laughs> I literally have nothing I can say to that. <laughs> yep. Whatever you just said. <laughs> <laughs> what they say. That was, that was even better reaction than what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, do you have an opinion on bucket hats, or are you just too shocked? I'm too shocked. <laughs> I need time to process this. <laughs> and if you ever want a TV program to watch, you need to watch Avatar: Last Airbender. Okay, it's really good. It is a, um, it's technically a children's program. It's, I'd say, it's sort of. The way that the age range is is sort of 12 to 15, and then the sequel was sort of 16 to sort of 18. Um, Yeah, really, really good. Um, I probably watch it at least once a year, if not once every six months, just because I can. And 20 20 minutes per episode, super easy to watch. Um, I'm going to assume you have Netflix, Jerry, because I think you can can complain that your daughter's on it all the time. (laughs) She is. Everyone's on it. I can never access it when I want to access it. <laughs> when too many devices listening too many, at once. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Number five, selfies. <laughs> Jerry's already shaking his head. Can I start? You go, yeah. go. So, so seriously, what what is this obsession with selfies? So I've never had... I've never liked having my photograph taken. Mm. I never liked it. Um, And generally, I remember growing up, I don't know of anybody that liked having their photograph taken in the same way that, you know, when you listen to yourself on on an answer phone. Or a two-hour podcast. Oh, God, is that... Or a (laughs) two-hour podcast. You think, oh, bloody hell, is that what I sound like? That sounds awful, right? So when when I was growing up, nobody liked having their photo taken but now everyone's just obsessed with taking selfies why what's the point if i kept taking photos of myself who the hell would want to see that who cares (laughs) nobody cares what is the point somebody tell me what's the point i I don't disagree (laughs) i don't know if you what you're laura i mean i literally just wrote ugh in my notes, um, I'm I'm the same. I don't like my picture taken, so I'm not a big fan of selfies. Some people are like, I don't mind it if it's like occasional. It's when people are like, and you selfie every day, and I'm just like, nah. So I, I like, unless have... it's like a like a like you know like a more artistic thing where that's like showing like the change in time, 
and you do it every day and then like fast forward it for like four years where it's good but then that's like compression of four years of photos into like three seconds and i'm i can i can handle that so not duck face selfie no Mm -hmm. no. okay i i i so i I mean i I agree i I mean i i hate i hate my photo being taken i do have some like interesting like thoughts on this i don't know why i've been really deep thinking but that's probably because of the damn that work this week um giving me the opportunity to do so um the i don't like individual selfies like i'm gonna take a selfie of me now like, unless it's yeah. got a purpose like i took you know if when it's just me i have to take one for like linkedin or, or you know whatever um but i've done that once and that was purely to update that i don't mind a group selfie to me, that's not a selfie though. Like literally, selfie self. It's in the it's in the clues in the name. Yeah, that's a picture of friends. <laughs> you okay, Jerry? <laughs> yeah. Am I a bit too blunt here? I I I agree. I agree. That's not a selfie. That's just a group photograph, and and that I get. Yeah. So if you if you're at a party and and whether you have a your camera on a big stick. Or you ask somebody to take the photograph, mm. right? That's fine. I don't care, but it's still a group photo, and that, and I get that because you say, "Oh, look, I'm with mates," and you know, want to kind of capture the occasion. And but selfie is when I don't know. You're just in a room on your own. You think, "Oh, I'm just gonna take a duck faced selfie." No, that 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 I 100% agree is just I the mean, worst thing ever. The only thing I don't like about group selfies is because I'm flipping the giraffe of the group, <laughs> I'm always the one that's holding the damn camera. And it's like, Dom, make sure you get everybody in. I'm like, well, how about you make my life easier and not be spread about 16 miles away from me while I'm trying to take this damn selfie? I do have go, written go down- Go gadget arms. <laughs> go, 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 go gadget arms. <laughs> I do have this, um, I do have this, uh, thing that i do regret though is i don't have enough photos of me and my friends i d- that is very that is that is one thing because i've got uh because it's 30th birthday so you want to post some good photos of you and your friends but i don't have any so but that's my bad um i'm pretty sure that one of my friends is going to kill me when when i post on monday for her 30th um then i was like I, I, it's going to be a case of oh i'm gonna have to post the one where i am well you're five foot two and i'm six foot three so you look like a hobbit unfortunately stood next to me and um, the, the lord of the rings jokes come out with yeah. shall i get you a box <laughs> <laughs> watch it dom because if i stand next to you i'm that hobbit <laughs> you're taller than i remember i'm sure you're taller than i remember well yeah if you remember me as as four foot eight <laughs> yes I'm, I'm taller than that only just no, I um, yes, I. It, it's surprised. I went into the office and met, uh, some a new team the other day, and uh, the first thing that they said to me was, "Holy heck, you're taller than than I than I imagined." <laughs> <laughs> no, and no other greeting. Just, just, oh, you're Dom. Nice to. Holy heck, you're taller than I expected because he's only ever seen me on a camera, um, and <laughs> I'm meeting someone that Jerry will know in uh, hopefully on Monday. Um, and apparently she's not the tallest person on, on the planet, so she might have a bit of a shock when she meets me. <laughs> Number a six. weather system Ooh. at head height, isn't there? <laughs> how's the we- that, it's always that, how's the weather up there? How, you know, do you play basketball? Yeah. Although I never was tall as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, as a teenager. It wasn't until I hit late teens that I went... Whoosh, um okay and and unfortunately laura's just always been quite small i've always been small i mean i keep claiming like i'm one of the tallest females in my family which i think is true but my family is just really really small like genetically (laughs) you don't have high hopes (laughs) so wait wait a second so what you're saying is that that was a normal size tea mug (laughs) (laughs) It could be. Okay. Maybe, maybe. It's all about perspective. (laughs) (laughs) Number six, denim jackets. What's wrong with denim jackets? 
<laughs> double double <laughs> denim? How oh, far can you go with a denim? I've always wanted to try a full denim outfit, including denim undergarments <laughs> de- and denim socks. Doesn't sound particularly comfy, but... Uh... <laughs> no, like that would own. chafe. That would chafe. <laughs> but I just wanted... It'd be cool. I just want to try it. So you're talking like denim jacket, denim shirt, denim, je- well, yep. denim jeans. Uh... Denim socks. Denim shoes. Denim shoes? Okay. Denim shoes. No, you'd Den- have to be like cowboy boots with that almost. Well, cowboy boots made of denim. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I think that's that's my my biggest problem with denim jackets. It always gives a whiff of the cowboy, and I don't know why. If that's, <laughs> I don't know why it just doesn't feel right. I just not a look. I feel like I'm pull off. I'm terrified oh, yeah. of horses. <laughs> and... well, wait, well, wait one second. You don't have to look like Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> that's exactly what I feel like. <laughs> Then why you're not going to be wearing a Stetson or anything? A, a good denim jacket. So you can wear a nice blue denim jacket with black jeans. So you can actually go double denim. You just can't go. You can't go 1980s German heavy metal band kind of. <laughs> full denim, Rammstein. Denim, yeah. <laughs> you never go full Rammstein. <laughs> no, you don't do. You don't do full Rammstein. To put it into a more 90s context, bewitched. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to hit both listening bands, right? We're trying to be diverse in terms of <laughs> age ranges, and yeah, you're right. Bewitched, that's it's just wrong. But you can you can pull off a um, you can pull off a blue denim jacket with black jeans, or vice versa. That's You're still laughing bewitched. there, Tom. <laughs> Slash Ramstein. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be broken on this podcast, but apparently I was completely wrong about that, and just <laughs> just the way that it's gone. Um, didn't they do C'est la vie? vie? <laughs> yeah, they did. That was the. I think that was Bewitch's big biggest song, C'est la vie. Yeah. Uh, roller coaster, as well. Oh, that's it. I can only remember. Well, no. The weird thing is. <laughs> You've said Salah. Funnily enough, and, I can't. Oh, I don't even know who Ramstein is. It's like you know. I'm going to now. Well, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna, now going to think. I'm going to offend the French because now the only song that I've got stuck in my head is that ketchup song. <laughs> that, that used to go, it was like that was it late nineties or uh, yeah. I know that's the problem. I've got completely the wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was a Spanish song, not by Bewitched. Salah is French, and we started at Ramstein. We were German. <laughs> what? We reached the Irish. <laughs> yeah, but C'est la vie was a French song, wasn't it? Well, it, um, had, the, it had the words C'est la vie. They, they were the only French words in the song. Yes. The, the, the <laughs> so we, I wouldn't quite say it's French. C'est la vie. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. That didn't have a French I can't say that phrase with a French accent. I can do the other ones. Sacre bleu. <laughs> No, I just make weird sounds. Jerry's is probably a little bit better. Yeah, I love the French language. Hashtag I, just saying. <laughs> I do until you need to do grammar. Mm. Mm. Number seven, playing cards. This oh, is ca- so random! What the and hell? You can't. And oh, it's literally oh. the best. Can I go first? Go. Absolutely. I lost the game. Oh, for flip's sake. <laughs> Does Jerry know that reference? No, I think it's a 90s to 2000s a children thing. growing up. <laughs> but we've just made everybody in, in, in our age range there just probably cry just by saying that. You say we, I feel I have done this much more than yeah, you Yeah, well, yeah, so you, so. you have, yeah. <laughs> have no idea what you're on about. <laughs> we, can, we can't explain it to you because then you'll have to play the game and it will just take, a, it takes over your life, so don't. Okay. <laughs> I'll explain it to you offline, otherwise we'll have to okay. explain it because it'll end up with kind of everybody. Uh, but playing cards, can't beat it. That's the best thing ever. You can't, I, I pretty much don't go anywhere without a pack of cards. I yeah, so a pack of cards. Really? What? Mm. That's like saying what? I don't have a fridge. <laughs> I mean, a fridge is a lot more important to me than a pack of cards. Uh, uh, uh. 
So like, I feel it's good when you go on holiday to have a pack of cards, but that's yeah. pretty much the only time. No, any any traveling trip, any camping trip, any taekwondo trip. But that's because you play it with people, so that's yeah. like holiday. Vibes. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I have to. Admit, I'm not like a I just solo. don't have a pack of cards at home. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm a Sorry. solo playing cards person. <laughs> like I can't do like solitaire and things like that. But group pack of playing cards, best thing ever. If there were no playing cards, you'd pretty much wipe out half, maybe more, of all of the magic, the world of magic tricks. Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. There'd be no yeah. world series of poker. I mean, I can't even imagine that. Are you and a then big poker how would fan? you ever play? Yeah, I love poker. Yeah. Wow. I love watching professional poker. I'm crap at poker, but I love watching it. I have the worst poker face in existence. I know you get trouble on every single this, me- meeting. I have the worst poker face in existence, but I use that to my advantage because I can't keep a straight face. So I just sit in the corner laughing to myself and everybody's really scared of betting with me. <laughs> I like that Which... tactic. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it is. I want to see this in action, Laura. <laughs> this oh, be there's, should... there's, also, there's also a double-edged tactic of this. I don't really know the rules of poker, <laughs> so... I don't even know if I am bluffing. <laughs> so oh there's God. the bluff, the double bluff, the really confused Laura bluff laughing in the corner. This is like Inception. <laughs> like a dream within a dream within a dream. This is genius. You should go in for professional... <laughs> poker. I will Obviously, be like... <laughs> throw. No, I reckon, I reckon you'd clean up. I reckon it would throw everybody. Go, what? What is she doing? Why is she going all in? What? Does she know what she's doing? Ah, I've just lost this round. <laughs> And you'll be going, and that's where you'll be looking around, Laura, looking at the, the audience that stands up, and everyone's up there going, "Whoa, go, Laura!" And you'll be like, just, I, don't, "I don't know what I did." Just remember Wait, when you do, do get here? when you do win thirteen point five million on a poker <laughs> tournament, do don't forget me and Jerry, who you know suggested yeah. that you do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I'll be your manager, Laura. We'll, <laughs> we'll sign you up to some tournaments. What's your cut, Jerry? Fifty percent. Uh. 55 <laughs> <laughs> oh dear no I, and but also um i have so many other card games as well i think i've probably got about mm. 20 um can't beat exploding kittens hands down best best card game yeah. uh, 52 pickup <laughs> Yeah, but you have to do it with a slight rush with a golden retriever around with you. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Especially if they're covered in peanut butter. <laughs> or biscuit crumbs. Oh, dear. Number eight. That would be a very strange magic after... trick. <laughs> it's your card as you take it out of the turd. Oh. <laughs> yeah, look. You may want Think to of your card. Well, Think sorry. of your card because I'm about to poop it out. <laughs> is this your card? What a load of old sh- <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt, actually. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. Pooping out a card. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's only got a dodgy digestive system <laughs> as it is. Yeah, it's very, very delicate tummy. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together now. <laughs> Number eight. Licking fingers after eating crisps. By the way, don't ask me where I get some of these. I just literally picked these <laughs> off of the internet. And I think I watch another podcast and they they get the similar things through and I just scroll through the comments and just pick random ones. So, um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> go. I, you said something interesting when we discussed this in person, Jerry, about a certain crisp, which I'm not a particular fan of. Oh, really? Which crisp? Yeah. You said uh, uh, a certain cheesy puff one. What's it? What's it? What's it? I'm not I a fan what's of it. Yeah, you have to lick your fingers after eating what's it. It's like half the fun. Yeah, because if you wash your hands, it'll be. So when you eat what's it, if you wash your hands after eating what's it, it'll literally be like any scene in a film where you've got somebody that's like accidentally murdered somebody with a knife. <laughs> and then they're washing their hands in the sink they're washing all the blood away and they'll be like that but it'd just be swirls of orange so you'd have to just and that's a waste of all that cheesy powder so you'd have to lick lick your fingers wouldn't you so 
controversial opinion, and I've seen people do this. I don't. I don't. I, I've never done it because I don't actually own a pair. But people eat watsits with a with chopsticks so they don't get the cheesy powder on their fingers. <laughs> I thought you were going to say long leather gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because well, I mean, because that you know, you want it to not get like evening gloves. You know, they go up to the elbow. Yeah. <laughs> Take back. Good Is stuff. it bad that I'm seeing that as like the latest what's it advert? It's just like someone like down, like full on gown, and just like dropping it into their <laughs> mouth as like elegant what's it. <laughs> And then, and then, controversially, then have a couple of people sat around like a traditional Japanese table eating what's it with chopsticks. <laughs> I've never heard that. However, That's you ridiculous. choose. Yeah, quick, what's it? Give us a give us a brand deal. We'll um we'll go and ad- we'll we'll go and do that advert for you. <laughs> oh, who, who pulls the short straw off the uh, gloves? Well, I'll you're the only it. one that's I'll elegant enough to do it. Mm. <laughs> Either that, or it's going to be. I can now just see Jerry in a in a pair of like <laughs> white gloves, holding like a. I can like get a, some blue ones. Well, no, like a um, uh, like those those like big silver trays, and then taking it <laughs> off, and then you know how they used to do with grapes in in Roman times, yeah, yeah. just feeding you grapes. <laughs> What's it? It's like grapes. <laughs> yeah, but then the gloves would go orange. I don't think you'd be able to wash that out. <laughs> no, it's quite staining. <laughs> what sits with chopsticks? <laughs> just broke. We, I think we've broken Jerry a couple of times. <laughs> I'm really trying to hold it together. <laughs> you thought our battle of was bad. That was... <laughs> I keep thinking the T Rex with armbands. <laughs> 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 But I, I assume a T-Rex wouldn't be able to lick their fingers after eating crisps. <laughs> I think you'd assume right. <laughs> Especially not if someone stuck armbands on them. But what if the T-Rex had chopsticks? <laughs> It'd have to be big chopsticks. <laughs> Can I just question you on the logic there? So you're assuming that the T-Rex would be able to eat the chops, uh, eat the chopsticks, <laughs> eat the watsits. <laughs> But then not be able to lick its fingers. No, no, no. I'm assuming that the T Rex would have to resort to like super long chopsticks to in order to eat the Watsits. Ah, okay. Yeah. He's going to have to get creative without the opposable thumb, but you know. And who would have taught the T Rex how to use chopsticks? Not me. <laughs> Are we? Am I questioning this too much? <laughs> A little bit. Oh dear. Am I overthinking this? This is where we get too distinct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we get very jovial <laughs> because we just lose it. I am like really thinking about this now. And this is the problem I had with the Battle <laughs> of podcast. Because I was like, well, the problem is, is because I think T- T-Rexes didn't have a po- posable thumb. So they were just like two two top claws and one other claw. And they were pure, their arms were purely used for balance. But I'm not even sure that a T-Rex would even be able to open a packet of Watsits, let alone actually eat them. So I think we're okay on that one. Maybe they, would, they wouldn't they would even like Watsits. What makes mm. you think they'd even like Watsits? Maybe they'd prefer Pringles. <laughs> Sour cream uh, and No, surely it snaps. <laughs> Monster munch. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. There's the humour level that we're normally at. Let's bring it back down. Monster munch. <laughs> you still need to lick your fingers after monster munch. Definitely. <laughs> I, most are probably non-vegetarian, I suspect. Uh, it's, it's pickled onion. <laughs> get a beef and onion. Or is it beef and onion? Or no, roast beef. Roast beef. Yeah, roast beef. Yeah, sounds nice. Laura's vegetarian, so probably not. No, you'd be surprised. Somebody was saying if you take a look at crisps. Oh no, every, loads. Every flavor, every flavor is pretty much vegetarian. They don't. Hint, anything that's like barbecue, it's it's just paprika. There Always paprika. It's great. There you go. Or your bacon rashes, paprika. Um. <laughs> what oh. even, even bacon frazzles? Paprika. Uh, wow. No, I don't like bacon frazzles. Wow. <laughs> ah, there we go. There's the. Wow. I'm sure there's certain brands that are actually containing meat products, but yeah, I'm pretty sure frazzles are just paprika. 
I do like a good bacon frazzle. Oh, lit. not a fan of bacon frazzles at all. They're so salty and so deep. You just know they're so bad for you. That's what yeah. makes them so good. To, to be fair, I can't remember the last time I... I don't really eat crisps that often. At all. I'm trying to think last time I had a bit You eat crisps. more crisps than a T-Rex. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have the similar proportions to the T-Rex as well. <laughs> Not sure about the armbands for me. No. Number nine, the smell of petrol. No. End of discussion, next. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. I, I love the smell of petrol. Oh, no. Can't stand it. It's really? vile. Yeah, it's absolutely vile. I love it. I don't know, it's really weird. Diesel's obviously not the same. Diesel's just a bit of a rancid smell. But petrol, you get that sharp, almost like metallic twang. Are you, do you drive it? You, is, your, is yours a petrol or diesel? The, Ma- the Mazda's a petrol. Okay. Uh-huh. I love filling up the Mazda. I love the smell of petrol. Oh, I see, I've got a dirty great big diesel oh, at the moment changing. Um God, that's the one thing I've got to remember is to make sure to go and put the right the right fuel in my car when I when I change cars. Although by the time you get your car delivered, it'll be you'll have to fill it up like Marty McFly. <laughs> Had to fill up the DeLorean. Like banana peel and fruit juice and stuff like that. Oh man, I'd love a DeLorean. No, yeah. I can't, yeah, so, uh, no, I can't, I don't like the smell. I just don't like the smell of petrol for courts. Don't like diesel, don't like petrol. I was surprised. I was expecting to be able, like, most people love the smell that I've encountered. No. Sharpies. Oh, yeah. That's definitely. just a nice, I mean, that's just a solvent smell. Just love. <laughs> There's a very, Laura has a very guilty look on her face. <laughs> yeah, why is that, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am a scientist. Like, I can. I, a nose is a very good detector of certain chemicals. <laughs> you know. So you've and been when sniffing they all sharpies them. before this podcast. Is that what you're saying? Is that why? No, I had a crutch before the podcast. Um, okay. So I've had lots of sugar and then the giant mug of tea slash normal sized mug of tea. Um, <laughs> but the sugar and caffeine combo. But yeah. See, I wondered if there was a correlation because I don't like the smell of sharpies either. I just find okay. all of them horrible. They're lovely. I might just be used to a bit more chemical smell, but I don't like petrol at all. That's to me that's a very different smell. Mm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Just me then that's a bit strange that doesn't like the smell <laughs> that most people like seem to like. I can't, <laughs> I can't yeah, I can't still can't stand the smell of sharpies. What's the other one that other people like as well? Something else. I'll remember it in about six, like <laughs> six weeks' time. <laughs> Something stupid like that. <laughs> oh dear. Right, number ten. Uh, so a little bit of a longer one. So normally we have like individual <laughs> items on our poignant questions, uh, but occasionally we throw in like this curveball, curveball question, um, and we've we've come up with a like a, a a a slight side to it as well. So if you could have a superpower, what would it be? And before we go on to the second bit, like. I want, I'm curious as to what superpower people would want. I mean, I think mine's pretty obvious. I want mind control. I want to go full on Jean Grey, <laughs> take over the world. Like, like loads of people say flying and I'm like, don't be wrong, it's cool, but like, meh. Are you talking about like Jedi mind godless. control? Like that kind of mind control? Or next level mind control where you can literally get thousands and thousands of people to think a thought I'm thinking Jean Grey X-Men slash Phoenix like mind control telepathy telekinesis all in one shebang like not power hungry at all are you Laura (laughs) I mean I'm not going to say I'm going to use the power I just like the idea of having it like you know (laughs) I'd be too tempted to use that power (laughs) I know your opinions on other things like a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner kind of <laughs> super <power>. Ultimate mind. <laughs> okay. Go on, Jerry, hit That's me. scary. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, really? 
I, I don't know. I actually, I really did struggle with this. I was thinking about this so much, but I don't think it's a superpower necessarily. Not really. I don't think I'd necessarily want a superpower, but I'd want the, I'd love to be, have the ability to just completely switch off all fear. That would be yeah. pretty cool. Mm. 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 That could be dangerous as well. So. It could be dangerous, but then if you channel it in the right way, I'd be intrigued to know if I if I managed to eradicate or had the power to get rid of all of my fear, what could I achieve in life? Yeah, I mean, like, because you've got like the small stuff. Oh, we're going to go deep, but you've got the small stuff. Like, I'm just going to send that email to that that my boss or whoever it is. That's stupidly, you know, when you delay that, but also. Yeah, I am going to do the skydive, or I am going to do the bungee jump. You're yeah, never exactly. going to catch me doing either of them, by the way. But <laughs> you know, you can go on the extreme. I mean, I would be. It would be nice to have that like eight-year-old confidence that you feel like you're rubber and string and indestructible. God, I miss that. Exactly. I, so that, I. What would you? What would you do, Dom? I mean, I've gone for like the thing that annoys me most, and the thing that annoys me most is having to travel. So I've put teleportation. I'm somewhere oh, else. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Because I wouldn't like flight. Like there's a practical sense to flight. You know, it was cold up there. Um, <laughs> there's and things like um, like mind Impervious control. Impervious darkness and fear, but not cold and wet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Impervious to darkness and fear. Jerry's power, but not the wet and the cold. Um, but there's, you know, and things like uh my like mind control or being ability to read people's minds is not something that makes me feel comfortable i feel like it's invasive then you've got i feel like in my mind you'd be able to turn it on and off yeah yeah like it wouldn't be on all the time you know and then and most of it would be like you know if someone's annoying you just like chef like basically being a bit of a cat and just like shuffling their cup of tea <laughs> to the edge of the thing <laughs> that's good and enough then... right yeah. That's awesome. yeah but then also things like um like super strength you know we can work uh, we can work on strength i don't want to be really strong i don't see the benefit super speed maybe but like for me the the, the thing that annoys me most of my life is the amount of traveling that i do it's like oh i just want to be here done oh that'd be so much better gods that'd be so much better <laughs> so i, I did that. i just went for something that was entirely selfish was you like, went very practical yeah i was like oh i just wish i didn't have to drive here um and also because i could be like do you know what i want to go to the bahamas and i don't want to take a flight because i don't <laughs> like flying and i don't want to do all the covid tests that you probably have to do and probably have to be butt swabbed at the airport because that's likely what's going to probably happen so i just want to be there bahamas done <gasps> awesome yeah that'd be so cool that would be that mine. That's awesome. The the second part that we have to this, um, which <laughs> I quite liked when I was researching this, was a seemingly useless superpower that could also be quite good. So the one that always comes up is the uh, the ability to fill things up, which sounds like a <laughs> which sounds like a really dumb superpower, but it could be things like, uh, oh my glass is empty of water. I'm just gonna fill it up or my wine glass is empty i can just fill it up but then you can take that to oh i don't want to walk my bucket back to the house so i'm just going to fill the bucket up to wash the car uh and then you could go on to like the evil things somebody's working on the computer i'm just going to fill up the memory on the computer so it crashes <laughs> <laughs> which i think i stole from jerry who we discussed this last time that's brilliant <laughs> Or I want to be really evil to somebody. I'm just going to fill up their bladder. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> All those types of things. Um, so yeah, that that's that's that was the what is the seemingly useless superpower that you could have, or any other practical things that you could do, which is the ability to fill something up. I got one, but it's a bit dark. A oh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so the ability to look at anything and know its worth okay. but then how do you look at people <laughs> and mirrors <laughs> wow <laughs> I mean it, it's would... not a power you'd want I feel I mean you could you know it, 
there are some things where you could look at you know you're looking at the cars that's how much that car's worth looking at but then also if you look at your brand new car and then the next day you look at it again <laughs> and the number just goes down and down and down not at the moment like, they're going up oh, that's oh. for the first time ever they're going up but yes i know what you mean i know what you mean <laughs> the joys of depreciation <laughs> yep. the value of a human she's so deep I need my armbands. <laughs> <laughs> I need my mental armbands. I've got another one that's a bit more lighthearted, if you'd prefer. The ability to transform two unpaired socks into one matching pair. <laughs> well, that's me and Jerry hate odd socks. That's excellent. <laughs> that is. That's a game I've also changer. got a thing in brackets, though. I never said they, the pair would fit you. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. They're matching. <laughs> That's all that counts. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> yeah, I hate odd socks. <laughs> you know what mine would be? The ability to turn anything into chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that can be used for both good and evil. What's your name, Willy really Wonka? <laughs> oh, is it with an O? Yeah, Wonka. Wonka. <laughs> Wonga. Wonga. <laughs> there was I read a theory that was uh the other day and this is this is off tangent so I apologize and it's not on script so again apologies Jerry. That's <laughs> um, fine. Um go off script. It was Peace. an article it was like people who were actually villains and they put Willy Wonka uh. in there as actually Willy Wonka is a villain not a hero. Can you leave that with me? <laughs> and then we can pick this up again next podcast. I'm really not so sure about that. Okay. I that think there be... was a moral. I think, yeah. I think there was a moral to that story. And I don't think he was evil. Okay. Even though that he decided to chuck a child into a, um, down a chute that, that led to the trash he compactor. Was trying to, <laughs> he was trying to teach people a lesson. Also, who lesson. names their child Veruca? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, people. That's the thing that grinds my gears. Veruca about salt. That. Grinds, grinds my salt. gears. <laughs> grinds my gears. And Violet, that's an okay name, but why did we have to go with the cliche that she was the one that turned into a blueberry? And Mike TV. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Did you know that was the first... It, it that was the it was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory mm -hmm. and Lord of the Rings trilogy the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings trilogy that really got me into reading <laughs> I love Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that's it's a the very first book I read over and over again that's a very contrasting set of books it is probably the the bewitched and the uh, <laughs> Rammstein or whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> Rams, Rams. yeah, that is like compare. It's pretty much like comparing Bewitched to to Rammstein, there, isn't it? Rammstein, <laughs> <laughs> German heavy metal band. Probably not your type of music. I mean, I I mentioned Bewitched. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we 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 know the level that we're currently at. Um, yeah, so completely off tangent there with two different things. Uh, well. You've put somebody's put. This is the duty of having two people that can commit to a to a Google Doc. I don't know who's who's put in it. Um, <laughs> uh, the next movie could concentrate on hero could fill things. Oh, la, la, la. How about Captain Humidifier versus Dehumidifier? <laughs> That's got Jerry written all over it. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> so, yeah, I just suddenly thought, okay, seeming the useless superpower of the ability to fill things up and then what if you had like the villain that could empty things so whilst you're trying to fill things up you had the villain constantly emptying things and then it just got me thinking about opposites so we've got humidifier got dehumidifier i'm not sure emptying would be quite as useful as filling could be if there's a flood mm, okay damn it <laughs> <laughs> Me and my put my big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Hashtag just saying. Hashtag just saying. 
Um, Captain Humidifier versus Doctor Dehumidifier. <laughs> I love the way that you kind of suggested which one would be the villain and which one. <laughs> yeah, the villains are usually, you know, it's like Doctor Evil or Doctor No, mm. or Doctor Jekyll. Definitely not the mad scientist. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one with the doctor here, Laura. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I've just got the. Now I've just got the. Quick on an aeroplane. Quick, quick. Who's a doctor around here? Well, technically I am. <laughs> Opens up Matt Lab. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not a paleontologist. <laughs> Get a little brush out. If you're a doctor in mathematics, say, we've got somebody having a heart attack, another person that's got food poisoning. <laughs> and you go, yeah, that makes two people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a doctor. That makes two Oh dear, I feel like we're right. just <laughs> creeping all over your doctor at there, Laura, which is I feel really guilty about, so I'm going to stop. Yeah. Right, well that was the end of poignant questions. Um, <laughs> my eyes hurt because I've been squinting so much. So um, we had like one really other topic. We didn't really want to go too much in because we were worried that this podcast could end up being about 14 hours. Um, just wanted to kind of pick up on a couple of bits. Um, so Laura listens uh, to the podcasts uh, so she's had her fa fair share of exclamations about some of the stuff that we've discussed um, most of them so I went back and had a look and uh, most of them I think one of them was <laughs> elastic elastic all the time we're now talking about fashion aren't we and clothing yes. issues yes so yeah. uh, this is specific <laughs> I, hadn't mentioned. I haven't done any context <laughs> so this is all about the fashion items that we've usually discussed so we've had like cuffed and double cuffed shirts where i went on about how not having a fitted suit a correctly fitted suit made me look like um, um well made me look ridiculous um crocs uh sunglasses indoors which uh jerry has two very different opinions of those two items and just generally clothes from being from fashion brands uh, slash being comfortable. So yeah, elastic. That was the big one that I picked up. I mean, I feel like this is just the female thing of like, well, it's not. Basically, it's really simple. If clothes fit you, they look good. That's it. Like all they have to do is fit you. But when you've got so many different curves and different directions and like nothing's proportional in the right way, or at least the way according to the people who make the clothes, like. Elastic's the only thing that can possibly help. <laughs> like, it's the only way to get it to literally stretch to fit. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're one of those lucky few who actually can pick a shirt up if it fits you, I'm just very jealous is the short answer. <laughs> like, so, like yeah. you, if you wear a wetsuit. <laughs> just, just... Would that work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm more thinking about clothes you wear in public, so All I'm right. not really sure <laughs> what sort of clothes you're like wandering around you in, in the office with trend. flippers. You could start a new trend. No, no, I well, I didn't say you had to wear flippers, so you could wear moccasins, <laughs> wetsuits, and moccasins, or the Crocs, or Crocs, or Crocs if you wanted to really upset me. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to go down that route, you wanted to set me off. <laughs> wear crocs oh no by all means <laughs> but I mean like oh no I mean even I can't pick up I can't pick up a shirt and it fit me because I'm built like a giraffe so the shoulders always come too yeah, far yeah but down. I always feel like with men's sizing it's a little more it's a lot more logical if you've got like I don't know like your your shirts are measured by inches right your trousers are measured by inches yeah Usually, that's yes. true that's I true know, I know where you're going with yeah. this yeah Women don't get that and luxury. No. And, and also, it changes between shops. It, it changes, changes between yeah. styles. And then you have vanity sizing. And I'm like, cool, cool. Like, what? It's shockingly oh. bad. Actually, Laura, it's shockingly. I read an article once where they, oh, yeah. they literally had a variation between a, a technical size 8 and a size 12 mm -hmm. for something that was a size 10 across a number of different shops. You just think, oh come on, that's that's insane. Why do the shops? Why do they get away with that? They shouldn't be allowed to get away with that because all that does 
is if you've got somebody it can put I mean, on a serious note you know we talk about mental health and things that could push somebody over the edge well, you have somebody going to a shop and well, say oh no I'll pick this up and that's a oh that's a size 12 actually it's a size 8 and they think oh, oh great I can't even wear a size 12 now and you know on a serious note that's, so that's really not this good this is partly to do with vanity sizing I think as well so because there's so much vanity particularly... sizing Oh, right. <laughs> Less than time for Jerry. So, <laughs> lots of magazines, lots of diet culture in, I guess, women's world. So there tends to be this obsession with always being small and skinny. So what some shops do every now and again is they'll shrink all their sizes. So, like, what a 12 suddenly becomes a size 10. The, the actual measurements, the clothing doesn't change, just the labelling of the size does. And what this means is that, you know, the women who follow all these kind of diet cultures and various things are like, oh, I'm suddenly a size 10 in this shop now. I must be doing good. And then they start to buy in that shop more often because they're considering themselves a more ideal size if they buy it from there. The clothing doesn't change. Mm. It's just the labelling. And it drives me insane. And I mean, we can get really deep on this. So <laughs> I think I've just confused Jerry very <laughs> Oh, I'm, sh I'm shocked that it's, they can do it's a, that. It's what? amazing what we don't know as males and how much our privilege. I mean, it's, it's something, it's, you know, the fact, I, I read a fact the other day that women are 38% more likely to die in a car crash because the safety uh. systems are designed for males. Yes. Yes. This is the whole, like, it's not about equality. It's about uh, equality, I think is equity. the term. Equity. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not necessarily about making sure everyone's on the same box. It's about making sure you cater for the people's differences because there are obviously mm -hmm. biological differences between between us. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand. I've never understood why women's clothing is just not measured in. I mean, there's certain bits that you're going to have to measure slightly differently, but it should still be in like inches. Basically, or every single shop makes up their own labeling system, and at the end of the day, all it is is a labeling system. I think we just need to stop looking at at them as numbers because they're all made up. None of them are real. Like mm. it fits. It fits. It's like story points, Jerry. <laughs> like I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I'm done rummaging in all the different aisles and different things. Like it's it's too much effort. Okay, that so that <laughs> makes me really angry for a start. It does. That's made me really cross. And secondly, what what is the point? Because so I can't get my head around that. Because then how do you shop online? So at least if I go to order a shirt from, <laughs> let's say. Well, Jerry, this is my life. <laughs> I mean, but this is insane. This is insanity. How can they get away with it? Now you know why. Like, now you know why your daughter probably buys about and, twenty pairs of clothes because yeah. she has yeah, to keep sending that's them back. True. This is shocking. Honestly, I'm actually really cross. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to control my anger about this. Because I mean, I, if you ever want, you like they often do have. Depending on where you shop, like they do often have size guides where they actually have the measurements, but like you would realistically like you can get multiple shops up they can have different numbers there's no set you know yeah. and then they have things like if you prefer it loose wear this size and they like some, 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 some online things try and give you like a side guide that's bit more tailored for you yeah. based on what you wear elsewhere we, we, I mean you sometimes get that um, a little bit with jeans where it's like it's a skinny fit or a loose fit or a you know for for, mm. for males but it's not norm but they normally still go it's still a 32 inch waist and a 34 inch leg or whatever which is too small but i i've just had something come back to me so there's a very well-known brand that i'm not going to mention <laughs> that i went into the store and it's one of those stores so they're really funky trendy kind of clothing brand so you go it's one of those stores where you walk in and you can't even hear yourself think because it's literally like being in a nightclub <laughs> so you, you you've got the the assistant saying can i help you shouting over the music like, i'm okay what i'm okay thank you i'm sorry no, i'm just browsing i'm just browsing okay let me know if you need an that kind of place and and i remember picking up a it was a, a sweatshirt and I thought, oh yeah, generally I'm a large and I, it wouldn't even fit over my head. So then I thought, okay, I'll get an extra large. I thought, oh, that doesn't fit. Then I got extra, extra large. And that didn't fit. And I thought, mm. what the hell is going on here? Were you in the women's section? 
<laughs> no, no, it was men's section. Okay. And eventually, I said, "Oh, this is ridiculous. I can't wear an extra extra large. I'm usually if I go into any other store, I'm just a large." And they, I said, "Have you got an extra 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 large?" And they said, "No, we don't do that size." I'm thinking, okay. For for, for contents of our listeners, Jerry is. No, you're not. You're not a large man at all. You're for my weight. I should be about seven foot four. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Just saying. Droissant. <laughs> <laughs> Cronut. Um. Yeah, I. I don't know. So it has happened to me. That's thing. It's actually put me off shopping there. Because you know, buying clothes from there because it's just what is the point? You don't know where you stand. It's a complete unknown. And so I don't want to spend half my life in the store trying every single size of garment to see which one fits. <laughs> so I've bought the same pair of jeans for the last twelve years. <laughs> Not so, in the sense of I've found so. I, as I've mentioned, I am gangly like a giraffe. So the the thing I find hardest is trouser length um because i don't like my ankles being exposed so i found one shop that there's a waist size that fits and then they do they're long they're long legs they don't normally do the legs often in inches they just sort of small medium well oh really no you usually get 30 so usually you'll get like a 34 waist 30 inside leg or 32 inside leg yeah i've got a 36 inch inside leg which is quite rare to come across and what's your waist 32 Good Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, so, you know, there are, you know, it's, you know, you can understand it being difficult purely because there are people are at such different sizes. Um, mm. You know, if <laughs> there's a foot difference between myself and Laura. And imagine if you have curves. Yeah, well, I don't have curves. I'm at least a stick. <laughs> Just dress this bean pole so it looks relatively normal. And that'll do. Um, but then, and then, and we'll, I think we'll probably, we may harp onto this a little bit when we go into the improving our health and what, what was the exercise stuff that I've recently been doing. Um, like trying to change your body shape as well and then figure out what, what fits. It's like, yeah, it, 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 it's a weird one. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a really big fan of like baggy, oversized art shirts because they always fit. Like, <laughs> it works whatever uh, works i mean yeah. i've got junk in the trunk so i <laughs> i so i'm you also know weird these proportions issues. i do yeah. know these issues seriously yeah. i do i actually do uh what else before we get too deep uh crocs you did put that crocs have a practical purpose yeah i mean i don't really i don't like crocs to look at but i i, don't, I know a lot of people who will wear them either like around the house because they're kind of like job shoes um, I also know of people who, like, again, it's more for work and people who have to work in sterile environments because they've got so many holes, you can literally walk through, like, detergent and, like, clean your feet. Like, it depends on your work. Like, to me, they have a very practical purpose. I would never wear them out in public, <laughs> but, you know, I, I would never be offended by anybody else wearing them. And, like, Jerry, he's like melt them all in a smouldering pot and like throw it into Mordor <laughs> <laughs> I would as well if yeah. I could oh man that's gonna be that's the second best phrase from you because I have another <laughs> phrase written down about our battle of podcast which I just mentioned I just I found it and I just roared of laughter when I heard it oh, um, God. I don't I, I mean I don't disagree with that I think there's this point between like I will never ever leave the house in something that's not a pair of jeans that makes sense like i d i can't see me in like jogging bottoms i just just think i look un you look untidy you look you look like you know you just didn't care about your appearance in the morning maybe chinos you know something that that's respectable but yeah i sweatpants absolutely not and crocs what, what, i i go pants? in that <laughs> leggings there are <laughs> the, um, as, the women can get away with jeggings Oh, I hate jeggings, but no. I mean, like as as uh, yeah, I can't get away with leggings. As, as, <laughs> as, 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 as a as a very tall, skinny guy, I just look ridiculous in very tight clothing like that. 
You should do it, Dom. I should not. There is <laughs> there is Jake a lot is. of parano there's a lot of paranoia about certain <laughs> anatomy pieces that means that I will never wear. I don't get me wrong, I I I do have, you know, like running leggings for when I go running, but there's always a pair of shorts <laughs> over the top. Always. Tell me we were going too deep. Um Laura's quote that I think will make you roar with laughter is um, about our battle off with the chefs. And uh, Laura just wrote that <laughs> about uh, uh, Mary Berry's signature move would be to push him over <laughs> tea bag while yelling soggy biscuit. Soggy bottom. <laughs> or soggy bottom. Oh, soggy bottom. Soggy. <laughs> what? Soggy biscuit. <laughs> oh Jesus, Tom, that's the wrong one. I wrote yeah, it is... down as biscuit. It probably isn't. Yeah, on that's water. that. <laughs> I mean, mine well... was like a bad joke. You took it to a whole new level there. <laughs> yeah, come on, Dom. You just crossed the line. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I should just fire myself, shouldn't I? I'm not doing a podcast anymore. Soggy biscuit, love it. Is it, is it not? But no, as a power you... moves, soggy bottom. She is always like, you can't have a pie with a soggy bottom. So. Oh, I thought I always thought that she was referring to a cheesecake, and you can't have a soggy biscuit base. Now I've just got Ooh. buttery biscuit base by flipping, <laughs> what's his name, Greg Wallace. Buttery biscuit base. Right, let's Sorry. move on before. <laughs> before we get copyrighted in several different ways. Oh, dear. Right, our conspiracy theory, we haven't forgotten about it. Um, we, as Laura was a guest, we asked her to come up with a conspiracy to, 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 to discuss. Um, and she's nailed it. So I'm going to let her explain what it is. <laughs> you say nailed it. Um, I wrote the idea down and I've done no research since. So uh, I'm hoping you guys have. Yes. Um, cool. So there's one called the Mandela Effect. So this is all to do with... Um, so I'm trying my words right now. So this is basically named after Nelson Mandela. Um, he, obviously, he was imprisoned for a long period of time. I think in a, was it 2013ish he was released. Um, and this kind of blew up a little bit on social media because so many people were kind of getting very confused because they're like, I swear he died in prison. Like, how is this man like? Don't get me wrong, great man, but like, got superpowers. You know, he can come back to life. Um, <laughs> And basically, this is kind of this. Yeah, this is the Mandela effect. There seems to be kind of this like false memory thing from like multiple mass people across the world. But like, some people argue that this isn't just false memories; that it's potential proof that parallel universes exist, and like somehow people's consciousness can cross these different parallel universes. So you have like alternate theory kind of weirdness that's pretty much the best way i can explain it which i'm pretty sure is quite bad but i would guess ella said you guys did some research right <laughs> <laughs> i did do some research this is basically real world multi multiverse is what what yeah. there what there is plus and then with the proof of it being the mandela effect and and there's loads of examples of the mandela effect in in society you know things like um the movie quote uh from uh snow white no uh not snow white uh, uh no it might be uh it's, everyone thinks it's mirror mirror on the wall when it's actually magic mirror on the wall and yet 99 percent of people would be convinced oh. that it's mirror mirror um things like that that's like some mandela effect i've just got jerry thinking <laughs> he's just gone oh yeah yeah uh and the one that we we spoke about is it's it's looney tunes as in t-u-n-e-s Whereas everyone would expect it to be tunes, as in T O O N S, um, but it is the former, and and loads of people get it wrong. And there's, you can you can search it out. Um, I did do a little bit of research about about this, and because uh, I am a bit of a nerd, uh, and I was looking at um, when when it got to the point that the way to prove this is with what they call eternal inflation and string theory. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I was like, this might be a bit beyond. I mean, I enjoyed physics when I did it, but this might be a bit beyond my my capability. So I don't know what. I mean, it's got an interesting title. That's probably why I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I've forgotten how to do the research on this. Oh no. 
<laughs> says the researcher. <laughs> what did you say? Doing what other stuff. String theory and what did you say? Eternal inflation. Eternal inflation. And I can I can kind of go into this. So basically, <laughs> internal inflation is the fact that our universe is ever expanding. Um, you know, e- eternally inflating, so to speak, like a balloon. Hmm. Um, and the the existence of quantum mechanics and string theory which i don't know anything about but it sounded good so i've written it down uh we would never ever be able to cross between different universes because it is eternally expanding at faster than the speed of light and we can't feasibly travel faster than the speed of light so that's why you can't travel between the universes um and because of the the speed of inflation um and that the expansion is going towards infinite so there's an infinite possibility of universes therefore there is an infinite you know there's a there's because there's an infinite possibility there is a possibility that a a parallel universe is going to be created where everything that you have done is exactly the same till say breakfast this morning um breakfast was quite a while ago for me but you know you know let's say just before we started this podcast and the discussion topics in this podcast should just be different. So there is a little bit of theory behind the the multiple universes. It's not like they haven't kind of gone, no, there's no such thing as the multiverse. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, I think the, the main thing I took from the research was the psychological, because we understand the psychological side a little bit more than a the quantum better, mechanic, yeah. mechanics. Yeah. People can sort of say, it's more likely to be the psychological than the than, than, yeah. than the multiverse. I mean, I the main reason I like this conspiracy theory is because it does, it takes a, a psychological thing and then a physics thing and then just tries to like smash them together and be like, <laughs> maybe? And like, you can understand, well, we can try to understand the two separately. Joining the two, maybe it's a bit of a, sorry for the pun, but quantum leap. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Great program from the 80s, by the way. Yeah. But um, yeah. What do you think, Jerry? I I love it. I think it's um. I just think it's it. It blows your mind, really, when you think about it. But because there's so many, when I I did a bit of reading up about it, and and I do find it fascinating that you'll have a collective interpretation of something. That never existed. But, un- but that never existed, <laughs> unprompted. That's the bit that gets me. So it's not like yeah. somebody with a superpower that you that you want to have, where you start controlling people's minds to get people <laughs> to think think something else. It's just really weird that it you'll you'll have something that'll happen. And so so I get, for example, something happening, and then you and, and ten people witness it, and then you. Um, or a hundred people witness it and you speak to the hundred different people and they'll all have a slightly different interpretation of the same thing and you think yeah okay but fundamentally the key events the, are the, the same the key right? events are the same <laughs> but th- this takes it to the level of so this happened and then you've got the collective that fundamentally thinks something different and you're like why are you thinking something different you know, even to the point of, and this is, it's been proven, there were things about um, events that happened and people could have sworn that the clock had stopped at the point of that event, but the clock had never stopped. There was never anything wrong with the clock. And it was, mm. you know, the time did move on as it normally would, but everyone could have sworn, no, the clock stopped at that point or something happened and everyone was saying, oh, no, that was definitely, you know, blue, but it wasn't, it was red. It's something that fundamentally different, but everybody thinks something... Yeah, I, I find that fascinating because what triggers it for me, for me, it's the, it's the cause that that fascinates me that I want to get to the bottom of, because something would have caused that. Something causes that Mandela effect on a mass level as well. You you say this so um there's a book that I've read um it's an absolutely fantastic book um and I am going to swear because it's called um oh god uh how the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Is the name oh, of the yeah, book I've seen by, that. by a guy called yeah. Mark Manson. Um, excellent book, actually. It's like a, it's it was the book that I read after I got almost like self help booked burnt out. 
because every book was like improve yourself do this blah, blah, blah. you can be millionaire and I was like you know, it's like it's like an anti self help book it's really good really interesting book um, and it's basically about taking that step back and realizing that things are okay like things are fucked but things are okay um, and one of the chapters I think it's this book but it might be a different book but I think it's this book he goes in to talk about a, a, a psychologist uh, a journalist and she this was around sort of the 1970s when like female oppression was really big and it was really important and all kind of those things and um and they were, you know that kind of like era um and basically she was listening she was she was going to a psychologist um, and she was doing a journalistic review on the way that lesbian women are treated so she's already in quite a like a weird place anyway in terms of what you're researching um and the, the the problem that they then had was she was seeing a psychologist and basically she the, the psychologist used a load of techniques and she basically went my dad raped me as a child and which is quite a big thing and it tore the family apart and basically they got sort of three quarters of the way through uh you know sort of another 10 years down the line and realized that she'd completely made it up it was a complete false memory almost like mandela effect that they that she'd almost like made up she'd had it's um was almost the body's defense mechanism in the brain to come up with there must be a reason why i'm feeling like i'm feeling now it's yeah. and it's you know i notice it now in terms of every millennial or gen z child has some kind of childhood trauma to explain why they feel so crappy you know, they always were constantly trying to find something that, that you know, that goes back. And, and I've, I've experienced it with therapists myself going, you must have had a terrible childhood. No, I had a absolutely banging childhood. My, ch- my childhood was great. My parents are awesome. N- n- no, no qualms about them at all. I think the term that myself and Laura have discussed is a little bit of perhaps gifted child burnout syndrome. But the point being that your mind will come up with defense mechanisms when it's being interrogated by certain therapists as as because that's what it naturally does it's going we're in stress therefore something must have been wrong somewhere at some point because <laughs> it, it needs an answer and then you get into this whole like anxiety pang attack thing um and that's why i think the psychological side of this mandela effect is so important yep. and we have to be so careful the physics bit is the cool bit, I think. That's the bit where it's like, ah, oh, it would, I've just got this, like, now I just have this image of, like, the multiverse, and I'm like, ah, oh, is, is, there, is there a person that does have the superpower that, uh, that, that's, that's me, <laughs> but has the superpower of no fear, and doesn't mind the wet and the cold? Yeah, I... I the, the parallel universe thing fascinates me as well, the multiverse. Um... But where I struggle with all of these things, where I struggle with all of the, the, the these physics theories and things, is when they talk about anything that's infinite. I, I do struggle with that because it goes back to something fundamental, which is it's just one of the life's fundamental questions, isn't it? So the three of us are sitting in a room, in a house or a flat, which is in a, we're in a building. That building is on, you know, it, it's in a county, in the country, on a planet, in a solar system, in a galaxy. It, you know, all of this stuff, it's got to be contained in something. Mm. In, infinity, S- in, infinity is such a big concept. And it's almost like our brains are not built to understand it. Yeah. It's definitely probably too big for us to kind of figure out, at least at least at this stage in whatever what are we humanity stage one. <laughs> well, no, we're not oh, eleven. We're near, <laughs> uh, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> trust me. We're nowhere near that. Exactly. So, yeah. We are nowhere near that. <laughs> we can't get a burger before eleven a.m. <laughs> Honestly, and people people are are smart. Sorry, individuals are smart. People are dumb. So, quite, quite from Men in Black there, I believe. I think I think you're right. <laughs> that's only because that's what came up on the quiz today. It came up on the quiz, but it's so, <laughs> but it's so true. And I was I had a call yeah. with somebody yesterday, and we were watching, um, we we're watching, we we're referencing videos that we've watched of people filling up 
plastic bags for the petrol oh, and double bagging the pa plastic bags because the petrol was leaking out and putting it in their boot oh, after they've been told don't panic buy petrol yeah. right so so yeah type one civilization you're having a laugh <laughs> but um, yes you're right we it I just I think that's the only thing that bothers me is the infinite and I think I, I can't get my head around that yeah and we just need to ask about those people that are sat on their bog rolls bog roll phones <laughs> well whilst everybody was out buying petrol the, the smart thing would have been to go out and buy all the toilet roll <laughs> can't drive anywhere but I can wipe my ass yeah <laughs> right that was but, I. I think that's such a good theory, though. It's, it's a really tricky one. I think it's the hardest one we've had to decide or discuss. <laughs> yeah, I love it because I think. I, well, okay, so I'm going to link. I'm going to throw one more thing in there because I was thinking about yeah. this as I was doing my research. But it's something I, I do truly believe in. Is is collective consciousness as well. So elaborate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I. Th and they've actually been experiments that have been done to show that our minds everything's connected because everything fundamentally is either held together or connected somehow through energy and consciousness there are theories that consciousness is a type of energy and mm -hmm. there have been experiments done where if you get enough people on the same sort of mental wavelength or thinking about the same things that there is a one percent effect where you can actually change something on a mass scale for the positive and they've actually tried experiments where they've taken a town for example and taken and then had people in that town and brought people in that make up one percent of the population of that town and have them for example in a big hall thinking positive things so for example uh the, this one experiment was about um a reduced crime rate so they were they were meditating and they were meditating and they were putting out thoughts of love and happiness and peace and and apparently the crime rate dropped by some a significant percentage almost by like i don't know 30 35 percent something i'm probably making that up but it it, it was a huge percentage so the well, week the 1%, that those... the criminals. <laughs> <Ooh. Sorry. laughs> Could have yeah. been. Yeah, so now this is where the science is coming out. It's like what's now. your data set? <laughs> yeah, what's the data yeah. exactly? You say percentages, but is that a statistically significant drop dependent on the population? I look, I all I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna say is all I'm gonna say is eighty seven point four eighty seven point four three percent of statistics are made up. Did you know that? <laughs> including that one <laughs> including that one yeah no and, and that's an in i mean it's an interesting point i know because i know that behavioral like as a human as, as a species humans are behavioral uh like followers we're completely yeah sheep. we're social animals yeah so yeah for example uh if you go they, they did an experiment where they put 10 people in a, in a waiting room right and they're 10 well mm. 10 known people and every time uh, they, they sound a beep, and every time it beep, everyone would stand up and then everyone would sit back down again. And then they got rid of half of those people uh, and then just opened up this doctor's surgery, I believe it was, so that the, the next, you know, eventually the waiting room filled up with five people just randomly off the street, but they kept the beep. So every time the beep, those five people would stand up and sit down. And then gradually the other five people would, you know, join in. They'd be yeah. stand up, sat down. And then gradually people were being seen by the doctor until eventually by a sort of like an hour or so, you had none of the actors in there standing sure. up and sitting down. Yeah. But all of the people that were in there were standing up and sitting down without knowledge. Um, and, and they do this with, um, they also do, you know, they started this with the monkeys. Lift one. Yeah. The, There's a lift test that's very similar. Yeah, and where they, you know, the, a monkey runs up the ladder to grab some food, and every time it does it, they spray it with water, and then and then it, it knows not to go up. Oh, well, then they spray all the monkeys with water, sorry, and then all those monkeys start to learn. If they go up to the ladder to grab the food, they do that, and eventually 
they swap a monkey in. That monkey goes to run up the ladder and it stops the monkey. They, all the other monkeys stop it because they know that they're going to get sprayed with water. It doesn't know that, but it just knows that it's bad. Eventually, they cycle all the monkeys out. None of the monkeys have ever been sprayed with water, but they know not to go up to the uh, up the uh, up the ladder because something bad will happen. But they don't know why. Don't know what that is. So there is like this behavioural bit, and like, that's where I can kind of see that this conscious element and this whole energy is probably something that could then be extended on. That there must be something related to it. Um, is so. it not just superstition? <laughs> Maybe a bit of superstition. <laughs> maybe a bit of superstition yeah. <laughs> right it, improving anyway, our but, health sorry, oh, sorry just go, before go. we go on to that i was just going to yeah. say so all, all of this stuff about you know psychic powers <laughs> and things it, there's no feature in it there's no point believing it. there's no feature in it <laughs> yeah, that's my crap crap joke for the day let's move very swiftly on Jesus Christ. to health <laughs> We're going to need improving our health after that joke. <laughs> right. Improve mental health after that mm, joke. Yeah. Yeah, we're all mental here. <laughs> improving our health. So, um, we, as part of the last one, um, and I don't know how successful we've been, because I think both me and Jerry have had literally the most stressful months. Uh, we say this every week, I think. Um, yeah, it's getting worse. Um, yeah, we, we need long holidays. Um, what's interesting is I... I set myself kind of a small personal goal as well as to do kind of the exercise to also go back and do the previous ones that we'd done. So I'm still doing the water because, and, and Laura was actually the one that came up with this quote. I have the, I need require the water <laughs> consistency of a jellyfish. <laughs> um, More than a jellyfish, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you have no idea. Um, so I then set up a chart. So it's got exercise, water, the meditation that we've done, the reading. And I also added in doing a Sudoku puzzle because that's, I actually quite enjoy those. So um, it's another kind of brain thing to do it. And, and then I set up from, so I did it from the first because I think we recorded and then quite late. No, we recorded quite early, but then I went, where did I go just after podcast? Did something anyway. So I went into like a load of stuff so I look at this and I've done, I've missed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've missed nine exercise days, but actually my exercise regime, my hardest thing is to actually be able to get a rest day in. <laughs> Cause I, otherwise I over exercise. Um, I actually missed one day of water. I didn't do three liters of water for, um, on one of the days, um, which was the ninth. And I look back and that's because I traveled like <laughs> up and down the country. So understandably. Uh, meditation and reading I managed reading twice since the first <laughs> so not not so good on that one and I've done four meditation sessions since the first so what's that 20 <laughs> basically three weeks it's pretty much bang on three weeks um, and then my Sudoku one two three four five six seven eight nine nine uh, nine things for um, nine Sudoku puzzles I've done over the 21 days so it's a interesting thing and selfishly i'm gonna just start with me because i wanted to kind of get people's thoughts on this before diving into to, to how jerry's got on the interesting thing and i i said this to laura is this oxymoron going on i'm trying to be like this perfect human like exercise water meditation reading sudoku's like brain training you know happy and healthy but I'm putting so much pressure on myself to do that. I'm not being very kind to myself. And Laura said it to me today in a chat. She said, you need to be kinder to yourself. And I said, oh, loads of people tell me that. And she's like, why don't you listen? And I said, because I'm not a perfect human being, I'm not listening to the advice to be kinder to myself, which means that <laughs> I'm trying to be a perfect human and be unkind to myself. It's like an oxy, I think oxymoron is the right term. Yeah. And it's like, by not yeah I, it's a, it's a really confusing thing and the meditation when i've done it it's been quite useful to actually reflect on what am i trying to achieve here by doing all of this stuff you know i enjoy the exercise and i have to drink the water because my body just shuts down if i don't drink enough but the reading the reading really got to me still i just i can't i just can't bring myself to do it it's just <laughs> just like 
I just don't enjoy it. And it's not like I'm not reading. I'm listening to audiobooks. I just get picking up a book these days just drives me nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, thoughts on just my general kind of this is where Dom is in his mental state. Well, I think I, I take my hat off to you. If I had a bucket hat, <laughs> I would take it off. There you go. Bucket hat on. Yeah. I would I would doff my bucket hat, my Jamiroquai hat, like you're wearing now. <laughs> um, no, fair play to you, Dom. You wait till you get to me. I'll, I'll give you my update, and then you'll feel a lot better about yourself. And then I'll just say, you're welcome. <laughs> what was it the wow? Wow. Yeah, I mean, it always impresses me that you actually like track all the stuff yeah. that you do or don't do. And I'm just kind of like, today I had coffee this morning and I didn't spill it on myself. Today was a good start to the day. We don't get any further than that. I don't. Rec- there's no. There's no records. There's no proof that you know I can deny or prove that things were good or bad. That's that's a choice on purpose. So I'm going to say something that's probably quite depressing, and I don't mean this it's, it's a very reflective way so for a, and i think i may have mentioned it to you both before i nailed being an adult like yeah. a couple a couple of days <laughs> I, like like well and truly like i got up i went to the gym i had a good breakfast i didn't eat any sugar i didn't call anyone a prick at work which is a really <laughs> big achievement at times um even like not to their face i was like just don't need to say it at all <laughs> right you know even off camera sort of thing um you know i got loads done at work I, you know, did some stretching. I talked to people politely, you know, all those kinds of things, you know, the, done all my washing up, did all the the flats clean, changed the bedding at a regular time, got the laundry done, did the ironing, those types of things. And I, what I'd find is I could manage like three days. And then the fourth day I'd like order pizza. I'd call everyone like rude words off of camera because they're all useless um i would you know i'd get nothing done at work i'd be browsing reddit i'd be you know going on facebook be talking too much and i'd just be like it's it's like a a paradox of like being an adult is freaking exhausting and i don't even have kids or another half (laughs) and i don't know how people do it i'm like how how do you survive being an adult and i don't know whether it's just this pressured time and it was really good to reflect and kind of go, holy hell, being an adult sometimes is just a bit broken. <laughs> I'm like, is this what my yeah. life's going to be for like the next 40 years? Um, quite morbid when I'm going, you know, <laughs> almost my 30th birthday. And in a, in a, uh, by the time you're listening to it, it's the next month. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you, if you're forced into a position, if you get yourself into a position where you have to do it you'll just do it and and what i mean by that is don't underestimate yourself dom so Mm. everything's relative right so so last was it last week or the week before i'm losing track of time but but my dog larry had an operation and yeah he he wasn't recovering very well from that and bless him it, 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 he, he was in a pretty bad state when we brought him home because he just wasn't himself at all and my wife and I decided to take it in turns to look after him so she stayed up till about four o'clock in the morning and stayed downstairs with him but then came and woke me up at four this was on a work day and I came downstairs and I ended up sleeping on the floor next to him but he woke up every half an hour and needed to be let out and I had to undo his bodysuit and aim around the garden because I, I had to stop him from, for example from getting to the to where they'd operated um, so I'd hardly had any sleep and then that night when I was dying to go to sleep my wife wasn't feeling well so she had to go off to bed I had to look after Larry my daughter was in a bad state mentally that night and everything needed to be sorted out with regards to you know the the dishes and you know there's just everything everything needed to be done and when you're at your point that point of exhaustion you think i literally all i want to do is curl up and sleep i'm so tired i feel like i could cry and i don't know how i'm going to do all of this you know you've got to put the bins out and all the rest of it but but somehow you do it Mm. you just put one foot in front of the other if you dwell on it you think oh yeah being an adult's really tough yeah it is it is but but you you can't 
if you think about it too much, it'll drive you insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've literally just got yeah. to push it out of your brain and just go, right, one foot in front of the other. This is insane. Yeah. I can't cope with all of this. So I'll just put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. And I think that's that's one of the things. It's almost like, you know, over-reflected back to that point in terms of like, I really, you know, I'm trying to be significantly healthier. You know, there's there's a few like unhealthy relationships I have with like exercise because it's all about you know body dysmorphia i want to look a certain way because i spend all my time on bloody instagram going why do they all look incredible and i look like a stick um and it's it, you know and i'm sure you, you mentioned your daughter i'm sure she probably has you know similar things in she terms does, of yeah yeah, yeah, yeah she you, does. you want to look yeah. a certain way and yeah um and i'm sure uh, i know laura you haven't done the challenges that we've done <laughs> but i'm sure you it comes up in your life as well um what's interesting about it was I was just like, I just want to, you want to enjoy, I also want to enjoy life in terms of like, yes, actually, is it going to matter if on, on, well, so here's where I get to. On Thursday night, did you wash up? No, does it matter? No, you can do it Friday. No, I I did the washing (laughs) up on Thursday. It was, I had pizza pizza on Thursday. I was like, I'm hungry and I couldn't be asked to, you know, I had pizza and, uh, christmas cake so no pineapple for god's sake tell me no 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 no. it was it was there was no pineapple i promise promise that (laughs) there's no fruit in any of in any of the food i'm glad to hear it (laughs) (laughs) but yeah it's it's that's what i've just found with the like the challenges that we're doing and i know that we wanted to we want to improve ourselves it's why i've i took a look at what we were doing and i wasn't going to add any more to our mental or physical challenges in terms of like a consistent thing it's going to be about trying to enjoy life a little bit more by doing these other challenges which laura will set out for us in a bit yeah. um so yeah and, and anyway i've talked a lot joey so do you want I, i'm sure by the sounds of it you probably haven't had any time to do any of the exercise <laughs> stuff so i'm, I'm going to level with you and this is really embarrassing but i haven't done a single day i haven't managed a single day Sorry. of exercise because I literally by the time I finish work and I sort the kitchen out and sort out the yeah. bins and sort Larry out and I'm there for my wife there for my daughter and you know sorting things out work wise and, and what have you checking up on my parents make sure they're okay because they're no spring chickens you know I, I've literally got nothing left in the tank so the thought of you know, doing anything more than just lying down on the couch and listening to some music to get me into a better mental state or reading my books. See, I love reading for me mm. is escapism, right? So I love reading. Mm. Um, so, so I will throw myself into a book because that yeah. that for me is that that feeds me, feeds my soul. I love it. So yeah, so exercise doesn't do it for me. So the thought of you know, I just haven't done it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to level with you because I just thought, no. No, I'm not and I, th- I think it's not going to make me happy. <laughs> so yeah, and I, th- I think I'm with you on that one, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, no. and I think I think we have to be honest. So, uh, um, have you ever heard of sp- uh, Laura? I think I've mentioned it. Spoon theory. The Matrix. Sp- spoon. It's not the Matrix, but have you heard of spoon theory? Bendy spoon. Bendy spoon. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, there is no spoon. There uh, is so no, yes. So, so spoon theory comes um, uh, from generally has kind of been a part of people who have like long term health conditions. Um, it, it's just a way of measuring energy levels, really. But it comes about where, um, and I can I can't pronounce it. Laura, you're the scientist. Fib- fibromy. Uh, fibromyalgia. Fibromy- yeah. M- Malaysia. Um, that's a. It's a chronic chronic tiredness, basically, is, yeah, is, is yeah. what it is. Um, and um, two uh, two friends were in were in a restaurant uh, early, uh, well, a restaurant cafe. And her friend was one of the friends was saying to her, like, why can't why don't you come and see me regularly? You know, why can't I come and see you regularly? And what she did, she went round the cafe and picked up all the the teaspoons. Um, so she had X number. Anyway, she she laid them out and she went right. Here's here's how many spoons you have for the day, right? Did you brush your teeth this morning? Yes, there's a spoon gone. Did you brush your hair this morning? Uh, no, because I had a shower, so I dried it. Ah, okay, so you had a shower and you dried your hair. That's two spoons gone. If you just brushed your hair, that would have been one spoon gone. And then you go through your day like 
did you cook dinner did you make a sandwich did you walk somewhere did you you know did you have a particularly stressful time at school etc and your spoons run out and then she's like got to the end of the day and she's like oh you got one spoon left but you still need to brush your teeth and get dressed so this is the point like at some point i have to make a decision between brushing my teeth and getting dressed because i've only got enough spoon for one for one of those things i've only got one spoon left to do one of the two things and that's the point where going to meet somebody uses that spoon and i think it's about understanding that you have everybody has spoons maybe perhaps some of us without without chronic tiredness have more spoons um than others and we burn spoons in different ways you know for me sometimes going to the gym gives me spoons because i'm like yes gym session reading a book that's going to take about seven spoons and chuck them in the bin because just (laughs) can't do it so yeah i think that's the conscious thing is where you get your energy from and how many spoons you have um so it's interesting and i'm not saying this from a point of view of poor jerry because i think no, my my situation is not unusual. But when you've got a wife with chronic health conditions, a daughter with mental health issues, you've got two pets, you've got a house that you've got to maintain. Maintain. I'm, maintain. I'm I'm the only person in the household earning. You kind of think, yeah, you. you I'm so that the time for myself the opportunities for for grabbing a bit of happiness is so rare that I will grab it with both hands, whatever that is, if it's reading a book, whatever I can do just to take some time out and to take my head out of all of that, all of the worries and the stresses, I I grab it. Mm. Yeah, and I think I'm entitled to. And that is where actually my best year was 2019, um, and a very, very good friend of mine, who is the other is another person is spitting image of Keanu Reeves. Actually, he, <laughs> right. he does look very similar to you, um, and he's a lovely, lovely man at, ta- at Taekwondo. And he pulled me aside um, just before we disappeared, like uh, our thing, and he said, "Just want to say, Dom, piece of advice: just be kinder to yourself this year. D- if you're going to do anything for your New Year's resolution, just be kinder to yourself. And I want you to make that promise to me now." that you will be kinder to yourself. And that year just had him in my head all the time. And it wasn't till sort of November when I when I uh, burnt and crashed a little bit with work because of, you know, just stuff happened. Um, I was, and I had a really good year. Like a really good, like I was just like, oh, I'm feeling like going to the gym, but you know, sometimes I'd be like, oh, I need to do some stretching, but oh, I can't be bothered. I just want to go and do like this, but I'm still doing something, so it's okay. And that's what I want to do. And it was, that mantra was, was perhaps something I think we should all include a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the other bit... Like, you stri- don't have to be perfect all the time. You're allowed to have days off where you just do nothing. Like, yeah, that's fine. That's human. Yeah, some people debate that with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing, Jerry, which I which I was interesting, I read today, um, you said, oh, I'm sure people have got it worse. Um, and... I saw a video of somebody saying that that's the dumbest piece of thing, piece like <laughs> piece of like things that people tell themselves. I can't go and see a therapist because people have got it mentally worse than me. Because you don't, when you've got pain and you need to go physically to a doctor, you don't go, oh, I can't go to a doctor because somebody's probably in more pain than me. And that's she's, a very good point. And they <laughs> basically said if everyone treated their mental health like and issues in the same way that they treated their physical health my god this planet would be better um, <laughs> so yeah that's what i think my my takeaway is for that f- our like how our challenge is going god i like that i like that mm. that's but that's powerful what you just said there <laughs> yeah we aim to be distinct and jovial to our listeners but sometimes <laughs> we we come up with some good things i think me and jerry and, and laura especially is a, a reasonably clever <laughs> We have some have intelligence. <laughs> Shut up, you've got don't, a doctor. Don't include me in that. <laughs> oh dear, you have, you have no idea. Uh, do we have, we have to go into our bromance again, Jerry? You have no idea how much I admire you. If you know, oh, the, bless. How much you've managed to do, like, family life, and then where you are in your career, and then how you hold it together with some of the people that you have to deal with. 
<laughs> honestly in some of the situations as well i mean the, the, i i love my team dearly actually um but but yeah some of this it's just the situations that come up and and that's you know that's yeah. also hammered me this week you know it, it's interesting enough since the last podcast my weeks have become more and more difficult both in my work and personal life so i i don't know why but I, to the point where doing the the physical challenge didn't even cross my mind mm. yeah so yeah. and i'm not saying it like i'm proud of it or anything i'm not i do need to exercise but it's it's just yeah didn't it's so mind. far from it's energy exactly. levels yeah yeah yeah, yeah. shall we get into like so we we are going to set ourselves a little bit of a challenge this one and we've yeah. asked laura to well come i'm gonna set you one yeah and it's a little bit different in that it's not something we're going to do like every day it's it's something nope. that we're going to try through the week um now actually interestingly jerry i don't know how much so background a little bit laura is a very 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 good cook in general i like cooking i like experiment i wouldn't say i'm amazing i just i fundamentally like that's you're, my reading you're doing like a food is my pleasure to, so you're, you're doing a disservice to yourself having having come and visited and <laughs> and seen your uh your cooking in person i know that you are doing a disservice to yourself anyway so i hate cooking i cannot stand <laughs> no that's wrong I train so much that cooking is a, f I need to fuel, I don't ha you normally have time. So this is about, for me, this is about trying something different um, yep. at, at time. I don't know how much cooking you, or how much you enjoy cooking, Jerry, or. I love cooking, but I can, I'm only comfortable cooking the stuff that I've done loads before. So my mother, taught me all of the dishes that she cooked and they're very some of them are very elaborate dishes so i'd say probably about two-thirds of what my mum has always cooked you know we're talking about dishes things that take two to three to four hours to cook and i'm not talking i'm not talking oh you you know you do prep it's and not slow it cooker, in the oven. <laughs> it's not slow it's not slow cooker or bang it in the oven i'm talking you know you've got three four different pans on the go mm -hmm and and it all comes together after about three hours so <clears throat> um so i love cooking but yeah the thought of trying to cook something new that i've never done before does fill me with some anxiety because i am actually a good cook but i'm a good cook with stuff that i know so this so could be fun <laughs> make of that so this, this is, could be yeah. fun yeah we did we so did send laura our dietary requirements jerry has tried to stitch me up <laughs> like a kipper <laughs> tried but failed i'm not like it's yeah. fine <laughs> so no more i mean life. with these challenges i did try and have a think about this to try and make it a bit just generally better so like for me with food food is about fun it's about pleasure it's it's about trying something new and like just going for it like it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work it's fine like you only learn by doing in in most aspects so you may as well have a bit of fun. Um, so I've set four challenges. So the idea is that it's like roughly one a week. You don't like you don't have to do one a week. You can have a day and power through them all. I don't know. You can you can see how it goes. I'll be honest. If it doesn't happen in the month, like I feel like you should hopefully be able to do at least one, and then you know the rest can go on a to do list somewhere. That's fine. Like when you've got time, when you've got free things. Um, but yeah, I didn't really try to keep them vague. So again, you can adjust it oh to like God. your special, like your whatever lifestyle you've got. I'm an so. instruction manual guy. <laughs> I throw <laughs> the manual away. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I'm sorry. I was too busy. I was too busy exercising. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't cook these. <laughs> right. Lord so have your mercy. So your first challenge is Bread Week. Is what? Sorry? Bread Week. Red Week? Bread. Bread. Oh, Bread Week. Oh, so Laura's just typing in the in the Google Doc. So any yep. bread. Yep, so it can be any oh, bread. No. It's just got to be homemade bread because we all know, as we've already discussed, homemade fresh baked bread is the best bread. So 
you can go nice and simple. You can get one of those packets where you literally just add water. That's fine. You can go really extravagant and make your own sourdough if you want. I'm not expecting it. Um, equally, you can go, you know, make a nice flatbread, top it with some reduced down passata, some oregano, salt, pepper, sun-dried tomatoes, olives, <laughs> loads of cheese, <laughs> fresh olives. basil, olive oil, and, you know, I'm counting that as bread because pizza is, a, like, a bread base. So you can do what you want with that. Like, tailor it to your levels. Tailor it to your your fun side, whatever you wish. I'm gonna buy a loaf of Hovis from. from no, you've got to bake. You've got to bake the bread. That's Curious the question: What do I need in terms of pans? Because that's my usual big. Like, I don't because I don't own anything. Like, so <laughs> context. <laughs> Uh, La- when I when I left Laura's, I came away with an extra piece of cooking equipment because Laura has given me one of her muffin tins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you could do like bread rolls in a muffin tin. I was going to need like a deep dish to do like bread. If you want, if you, I mean, you can. You can also do some like free form loaves. Like, I'm, like, it's meant to be fun, like. I mean, you can even you can do flatbreads in a frying pan if you wish, like any form of bread. I'm giving you complete free reign. Banana bread. <laughs> Got to be more uh, bread than cake. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Okay. 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 <laughs> so so you anxiety be... level eight. <laughs> it's just bread. I promise out you. Out of eight and a half. <laughs> what are we out the scale? of? It? That's the scale. Yeah, I was going to say I'm at 11, but we're out of 10 here. <laughs> Guys, it's just bread. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, go on. It'll right. make your kitchen smell lovely. Challenge two. I went with cheesecake because I wanted something what? fun. What? <laughs> Come on. Now, this one, actually, no, this one would be... I, I'm, this one I probably might actually will attempt. Well, I feel like nobody you're never going to cook something you don't want to eat so like i i figured you both of you guys would like cheesecake and again you can do any type of cheesecake you know yeah you can so i'm do lots one, of big I'm, ones you can do mini ones i'm gonna make whatever. mine harder because obviously my for those that for the listeners um i i really struggle my body struggles to process sugar not diabetic yep. i'm the opposite my body has too produces too much insulin um so i will probably make that a diabetic cheesecake which means that it contains yeah. no sugar yeah um, do low sugar sugar free use fruit instead type thing it's all fine <laughs> jerry's or, like wide-eyed at the moment <laughs> or you can for jerry he can go on the full-on chocolate scale you know this is the one time where i like i can appreciate a biscuit is when you smash it up Pour loads of melted butter over it and then crush it at the bottom of the pan. Stick it in the fridge overnight. Deal with the f- filling the next day. Okay. <laughs> I can't tell if I've just scared Jerry to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anxiety level probably about eight point four nine right now. <laughs> out of a scale of eight point five. What is this scale? Why is this scale? Know. Out of I just made it up. I right. have no idea. On a scale of two to seven, how was that bread? <laughs> Six. What's like, that? And a half. Go online, find find something that looks good, and just follow the recipe. Like. It's the not worth any more thinking. The one that's normally in the freezer in Asda. Yeah, I was going to say, go online. Oh, look, Tesco's <laughs> lemon cheesecake. Bosh. Oh, I do have, have a lemon it. cheesecake. Have it. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you'll like this one because this is hopefully the easiest one. Um, basically, it's just very simply something you've never tried before. So this could be you again finding a brand new recipe and cooking it or just simply like a new fruit or a new vegetable something new Uh, i'll even like let you have the uh if you haven't tried them yet the the corn um rawsoms sorry sorry the corn what (laughs) rawsoms it's like it's like it's like turkey dinosaurs but corn so they're rawsoms 
<laughs> right. so as, in, as in raw <laughs> as in emo goth raw yes. as in the t-rex who's trying to you know pick up the what's it i will be it. impressed if jerry can make them from scratch as in, um, in the t-rex shape but the only difference is i With want the t-rex bands. to have armbands that, <laughs> that challenge you don't have to make it from scratch you just have to try something new so okay hopefully yeah, that's that's a nice achievable one a new type of fruit, as long as nobody makes me. Well, I've had dragon fruit, so that wouldn't be not, that wouldn't be new. Go or veg. I'll, I'll just have some fruit. That's fine. <laughs> That's just new. It's got as long as it's new. As long as it's new. Oh my god, it's an orange. It's got segments. What the hell? It tastes orangey. Yeah, this that should be a challenge. Laura has to eat an orange. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. I know, I know the one food. I know the one food that Laura doesn't like, which is oranges. <laughs> Okay. So when when we discuss like cho- flavored, because we never discuss things like flavored chocolate. So Terry's chocolate orange. Laura can't no. stand it. Oh, I love a te- Terry's chocolate orange. That's the closest okay. I get to eating fruit. <laughs> Don't tap it, whack it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that advert? Oh Dawn God, what's French. her name? Dawn French. That's it. That's it. Number four. Go on, let's just For, spike Fourth this and the final one. <laughs> okay, this may push Jerry over the edge. Or may not, <laughs> depending on how it goes. Um, so I I kind of got two options, depending on what you want. A homemade soup or stew, because it's coming up to winter. Or your your favourite takeaway, but just make it yourself. So if Jerry, if you want to make a burger at 10am, <laughs> it can be done. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go and steal some Big Mac special sauce. Yeah, special but sauce. Yeah. So yeah, Dom, you put a face at the homemade soup stew, was it? Oh uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not a fa- so. I, I don't like heavy food, so I don't like stew. I don't like. I'm just not a fan of like gravy and potatoes. I mean, I have them, but just not a, not not a like a. It could like, be any soup. It could be like ramen. I mean, I th- I mean, yeah, exactly. So I'm more likely to do the soup than the. St- it was the stew that I poured a face yeah. at more than anything. Because <laughs> the thing I have with stew is that normally you end up with soggy potatoes, and potatoes have to have a specific texture. They either need to be crispy <laughs> in the form of chips or maybe wedges, or they need to be crispy in the form of roast potatoes. There's no other version that are nice. Uh, <laughs> new potatoes where they've still got the skin on that those are acceptable jacket potatoes is sometimes acceptable but when they go boiled potatoes or mashed potatoes are just a sin against men because it's just (laughs) the texture is just vile Um, and then they always stick that in stews and then you just have this really heavy gravy and I always just feel like things and dumplings dumplings in stews as well it doesn't get heavier than that yeah it's just it's just too heavy um So it it will probably be I don't know I don't know if you can how you make a can, can I just say I'm breaking out into anxiety <laughs> hives I've like got an anxiety I tried to, rash you <laughs> like I've I've tried to write this in a way so that you know it's very flexible you can tailor this to whatever suits you best so maybe figure out what that one is <laughs> yeah I'll tailor it to one challenge <laughs> so I'll tailor this from four to one. And I don't know. None of these are easy, really. I feel. I have, to have a think about this. I mean, I feel like bread is easy. Like you can literally yeah. buy packs, and you just add water. Oh, so you can it's cheat. Like... You can actually. Okay. All right. This is changing the landscape a bit. <laughs> yeah, Jerry. We've got to use our noggins here. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. We're gonna have to think laterally. Yeah. You're, you're pretty. You're usually pretty good at that. I mean, yeah. so, you're the one that came okay. up with the medieval fast food things <laughs> from our episode one, which I will never ever forget. And I think, where the Shrek did that come from? So if you go to the section of the supermarket with the flour, you normally find like the other bits as well. They will also have bread mixes, and they literally just. I don't even know what aisle water. the flour is on. Oh, Jesus. Oh, aisle seven. <laughs> oh no, I do because I do get flour for um. For um, pancakes, but it's on a different aisle to the eggs. 
Should be on the same. You should no, be, it's uh, not in Asda. There's like a specific baking aisle, and then the eggs are with the tea and coffee. What? What the I, hell? I, I know. <laughs> that's welcome to Asda. I've never oh, understood for that. Goodness sake. Then the aisle, next, the... <laughs> the aisle next to it, I do know that the aisle next to it is the uh, is the canned goods aisle. So you've got like the canned fruit and things like that. So, so what you're saying is, if you go to the Asda near you, if you want to make a cake, you've literally got to zigzag from one corner of the store to the other. Or I'll just go to that that part of the yes. store to get eggs, and then I'll just walk half a mile that way to go and get some flour, and then I've got to walk back half a mile the other way to go and get. Yeah, you do know. actually, because the milk. <laughs> because if I want to make pancakes, so the three ingredients of pancakes are eggs, milk, and flour. If milk is like the like the cold section is the first section so milk is there it's about halfway in that and then then you've got what's the next bit then you've got like world food so it's like your pastas your stuff like that then cereals then you've got the tea and coffee aisle which has got the eggs on it and then you've got to go all the way down to the other end to the bake bakery section near the freezers and then the aisle just before the freezers is the baking one where you've got like those like <laughs> You know, you've got like the custards, the jellies, and you've got all those cake mixtures, and it's got the flour on it. I think that's a challenge in itself. Just to navigate <laughs> so around the market, right? So you wanted lateral thinking. That's a challenge. <laughs> Just get the ingredients for a pancake. There you go. That's one of them ticked. I've already got them. So what I like. <laughs> oh. That's because I like scrambled egg, and because I have the I like pancakes. So I've got flour. You and peaked too early. Yeah, I peaked too soon. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. okay. Have, have I gone too hard on the challenge? I can't promise all four will be done. That's probably the only thing before the before the next podcast. Yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. the only thing. But we'll fair. feedback with what we've done. <laughs> I've now got anxiety psoriasis. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anxiety induced done? eczema. <laughs> that's all I've got. <laughs> oh, Thanks, God. Laura. Are we done? We've done everything on the so. things. Wow. 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 <laughs> that's, sorry, that's a, that's a bit of an in-joke. Um, yeah, we've... Um, so what's that? 161-minute uh, recording? That's hour, <laughs> two hours 40? That's not bad. It wow. didn't. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my, my normal, the, the last thing. Jerry, any final thoughts? Yeah, I need some cream for my <laughs> anxiety, eczema, and hives. That's what the cheesecake's for. Okay, what? You, I slather myself in cheesecake. <laughs> okay. You make one and then you eat it, and then you'd be like, "Ah, oh, it's it's not that bad. It's fine. It's worth the pain because I get this delicious cheesecake at the end." Okay. All right, that that sounds good. <laughs> sounds like a plan. Um, yeah, final thoughts. Great to have you on the show. On the show, listen to me. It's like a professional production. Big but great time. to yeah, but great to have you on the podcast. Or thank you for joining us. And and yeah. I think it's great because it just brings a whole new dynamic to things. And that that's the deepest um, conspiracy theory that we've had. <laughs> and I love that. Uh, there's a lot more I could have said about that. Yeah. But it was just, it was actually blowing my mind a bit. So that's brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. Laura, final thoughts? My mind is just blank right now, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so good at that. Um, I, I mean, I feel like you may not like want me back on your podcast, like unless I bring baked goods. That's that would be the only criteria. I think that's fair. I think that's yeah, fair. I think yeah. that's fair. I think that's a prerequisite from now on. <laughs> yeah, prerequisite. Yeah. Prerequisite is to send us baked goods. I think um, yeah. I have ambitions. I have ambitions, which I will I will reveal, but won't, won't put on the podcast. I think we'll finish it there. Um, yep. Thank you very much, Laura, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it has been you. excellent to have you as a guest. Jerry, you're wonderful as always. And you know, you know, thank you, you very much. You're, Tom. you're a brilliant man. Um, and to too. the lis listeners, thank you ever so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, we are going to need a little bit of help with our next one. Uh, we are going to do 
uh, we are going to finally do our fragrance uh, discussion uh, in in the next one. Um, but we have no poignant questions because we're gonna we plan to do a bit of a Q and A from the audience. So I will bombard people, friends, family with um, what do you want to what do you want to ask us now that you've <laughs> listened to us for five podcasts <laughs> and this will be our sixth. Ask um, Dom and Jerry, I like that. Yeah. So we're going to do a Q and A special with our our fragrances for the next the next podcast. Um, thank you ever so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Stay safe. Um, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks, Laura. Bye. Take care. <laughs>